Good afternoon and welcome to uh, the May the 5th, 2013 convening of the Baltimore City Board of Municipal and Zoning Appeals. Uh, sorry for a little bit of a, of a delay before uh, we got started this afternoon. Uh, and before we get into our, uh, our hearings, some ground rules. Uh, first, if you have a cell phone, a pager, anything that makes any kind of audible electronic noise, and plays a ringtone, the like, uh, we ask at a minimum that you please turn uh, those devices to a vibrate-only position, and if not off. Uh, additionally, the extent that you need to have a conversation, um, we ask that you please take that conversation out the double doors to your rear. And the reason for uh, uh, for those rules is uh, pretty simple. You'll note that there are a number of microphones that are arrayed around us up here, uh, and those microphones are all very sensitive. They're not only for the purpose of amplification, but they're also for the purpose of recording these proceedings. And cell phones, pagers, and the like, um, conversations um, uh, all uh, disrupt the uh, recording of these proceedings as well as the general conduct of these proceedings. Additionally, um, those of you who are sitting forward of the wall above you uh, and all of you can see that there are two cameras up here mounted on the wall behind us and there are three video cameras mounted on the wall behind uh, all of you. And those video cameras are for the purpose of recording these proceedings for broadcast on the city's uh, cable access network. Um, and uh, again, cell phones, uh, pagers, conversations, and the like disrupt uh, that process as well. Uh, we will be voting at the end of the day, but if you've got something better to do on a rather splendid May afternoon, that's certainly understandable. You can take out pen and paper, can give you the number for the zoning board office, and you can call in in the morning and find out how we ruled. Uh, I'll read this number off a couple of times. The number for the zoning board office is 410. 396-4301. Again, that's 410-396-4301. You will, however, need to wait until you receive the formal written notice of the outcome of your case. That should be forthcoming in about three to four weeks uh, before uh, you'll be able to get your permits. We certainly ask that you not uh, build in the city of Baltimore without first obtaining all proper permits. Uh, <coughs> if you are... Uh, here in opposition to any case, and you have not already done so, please make sure that you sign in in our sign-in sheet, which Mr. French is holding up over there. And the sign-in sheet allows us to know uh, uh, not only generally which cases have opposition, but also allows us to know who needs to receive those aforementioned written notices I referred to. Um, so please, if you're here in opposition to any case, please sign in in the sign-in sheet. Uh, the procedure for the cases uh, when we call them today is um, going to be fairly straightforward. Um, if you're the appellant, you'll come forward and you'll stand to uh, my left or your right. Um, the opposition, if any, will stand to uh, my right or your left. Once everyone is up here, we'll get you all sworn in. Uh, and uh, the, uh, we'll start first start off with the appellant. He'll be given the opportunity to um, let uh, the board know what it is um, they're proposing, what uh, uh, issues are involved, respond to any questions um, that the board may have, um, and present any uh, witnesses or other evidence that, uh, that the applicant would like the board to consider. Once they're done with their presentation, we'll then turn to the opposition. We'll be given the opportunity to um, give us their side of things. Once the opposition is done with their presentation, we'll turn back to the appellant to respond to any points that were brought up by the opposition uh, and to offer a uh, closing, uh, uh, to offer closing remarks. We won't be going back and forth, <laughs> back and forth unnecessarily delaying things and keeping uh, folks uh, here later into the day than is necessary. Um, we will generally be calling the cases in the order in which they appear on the docket um, after we first deal with some preliminary issues. Uh, first, we have uh, a number of um, postponements, and these are cases um, that won't be heard today. And if you're here on any of these cases, um, uh, those cases won't be going uh, forward today, but uh, so long as you have signed in on the signing sheet, um, we will know how to notify you when those cases will be going forward. But these cases won't be going forward today. First case that's postponed is 2014-538. The rear of 2213 to 15 East Pratt Street. 
that case has been postponed. Additionally, 2015-95, 3501 through 11, O'Donnell Street, that case has been postponed. And 2015-108, 801 through 09, Eastern Avenue, that case has been postponed. Uh, if you're here on any of those cases, um, they won't be going forward uh, today. And um, again, please make sure that you sign in the signing sheet so we can notify you when they are moving forward. Uh, the next group of cases that we'll address are cases that are on our consent agenda. Uh, and the uh, consent agenda consists of cases for the zoning board staff who review these files, uh, and uh, the board has determined that there is sufficient information to approve these appeals. Um, we're going to call all the consent cases as a group. Um, so if you can try and stay in the order in which you're called, the first person will line up here, everyone else will line up uh, behind them. Uh, uh, once you're all up here, uh, we'll get you sworn in, and um, you can offer any additional information you would like to have added to the record at that time. Uh, first case on the consent agenda is 2015-67, 208, 208 Lloyd Street, Lee Giroux. Next, 2015-90, 514 East 25th Street, Fennel Aladdin. Next will be 2015-91, 1415 Bush Street, Adam Berg. Next will be 2015-103, 2400 Boston Street, AB Associates, care of Nate Predel. After that will be 2015-105, 3604 Eastern Avenue, Verizon Wireless, care of Alexander Bull. Next, 2015-110, 1712 Alessandra Street, Virgil Bartram. Next will be 2015-113, 3213 Foster Avenue. John Noonan. Next after that would be 2015-117, 625 South Conklin Street, Fred Visnaw. 2015-118, 3020 Elliott Street, AB Associates Care of Nate Credle. Two thousand fifteen one twenty sixty five sixteen 6516 Pebblebrook Road, Israel Goodman. 2015-125, 1517 through 23 at South Cape Avenue, Verizon Wireless, care of Michael Weiland. 2015-126, 1910 through 14 Light Street, Joseph Stelman. 2015-127, 3814 East Northern Parkway, Michael Crowder. And last, 2015-130, 1207 through 15 South Highland Avenue, Lisa Junker. I do. Okay. Uh, first case is 2015-1, 208 Lloyd Street, Ms. Rue. Yes, good afternoon. Afternoon, Ms. Rue. We have this application to subdivide the lot uh, retained 208 Lloyd Street for an attached single family dwelling and to use uh, to be known as 1007 Allen Street for an attached single family dwelling. Is that correct? That's correct. Mr. French, do you have any, uh, anything for the planning department? Thank you. Martin French for the Baltimore City Planning Department. Planning Department recommends approval of this application. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Rue, did you have anything further you'd like to add? I have some revised plans. Uh, there was a discrepancy between SDAT and the city, and we had a new survey done. And we're asking for two units at this point. Originally, there was four units to be um, proposed, but that's not possible with the lot size and the buildings. 
So I have some proposed, I have some new revised plans that were just given to me today. So, so these are new. These are yeah. These are. Press. Yeah. I think so. Thank you. Anything no, that's it. Thank you so much. Zoning board staff having previously reviewed your application, there's no one that there's sufficient information to include here for you. Thank you very much. Have a good afternoon. Next up, 2015 90, 514 East 25th Street, Reno Lab. Here. Afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. By the way, how am I pronouncing that? Aladdin. Aladdin, okay. Got it right. Uh, Mr. Rodden, we have this as an uh, application to use a portion of the premises for motor vehicle sales in conjunction with the existing garage for storage, repair, and servicing of motor vehicles. Correct? Yes. Okay. Mr. French, anything to the planning department? Thank you. Planning department reviewed this application and recommends approval subject to these conditions. There will be no parking, staging, or storing of vehicles on public rights of way. There will be no parking or storage of unlicensed vehicles on the property. All work must be performed indoors. All materials, parts, and equipment related to the use will be stored indoors. The area used for temporary storing of vehicles awaiting repair will be adequately screened by an opaque fence or wall. And if a dumpster is used to collect trash and waste related to this use, the dumpster will be placed either inside the existing building or within a masonry enclosure having a solid lockable wooden gate. Thank you. And Mr. Uh, Aladdin, uh, do you accept the conditions off of the planning department? Yes, I do. Okay. And did you have any for, anything further you'd like to add to supplement the record? No. So, <coughs> zoning board staff, having previously re reviewed the application, to determine if there's sufficient information to approve your appeal. Thank you. Look at that. All right. <coughs> Uh, next up, 2015-91-1415 Bush Street, Adam Bird. Afternoon, Mr. Wallman. I'm Good assuming you're here for... I'm here on behalf of Mr. Bird, yes. All right. Uh, we have this as application to use a uh, portion of the premises um, known as Suite Number 800 as a recreational building. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. And uh, Mr. French, anything for the planning department? Thank you. Planning department noted that this property is in the Carroll Camden Industrial Area and therefore recommends that approval of this appeal be subject to the condition that the applicant maintains hours of operation and schedules of indoor recreational activities which would not generate conflicts of traffic with existing vehicular service to nearby industrial or other commercial uses in the Carroll Camden industrial area. And we've discussed this with the representative for the applicant. All right. And uh, Mr. Wolman, do you accept the conditions off of the Yes, we do. And was there anything further you'd like to add? Just a letter and email of support for the record. Letter from the Carroll Camden Business Association and Gwynn's Falls Trail Council, both in support. All right, we'll add those. Anything further? Nothing further. All right, zoning board staff having previously the video application we determined that there was sufficient information to approve your appeal. Thank you. Thank you, good luck. Next up, 2015-103, 2400 Boston Street, AB Associates, care of Nate Treadle. Good afternoon. Afternoon, Mr. Baird. Uh, we have this as application to increase outdoor table service accessory to restaurant uses from 100 seats to 400 seats. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. And Mr. French for the planning department. The planning department recommends approval of this appeal subject to these conditions. Accessible pathways is provided in the plan approved by the Planning Commission. And the sidewalk must remain clear and unobstructed for pedestrian use. The capacity of the outdoor seating area will be not more than 400 patrons. There will be no outdoor bar, no outdoor music, jukebox, or other form of entertainment. And all patrons must be seated for dining and served by wait staff. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And Mr. Berry, uh, did you plan to accept the conditions offered by the Planning Department? Yes, no problem. And is there anything further you'd like to add to the record, Scott? No, I think the record should also include a number of letters from the community associations, homeowners associations that are in support of this. Okay. Uh, Can Company went out and gave them a full briefing and plans uh, before we applied to receive planning commission approval as an amendment to the PUD back on April 23rd. 
and the original plan unit development goes back to 1988. Seems like only yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. All right, uh, and I think that we have those slides in record, correct? Right? Yeah. All right, anything further? That's it. All right, zoning board staff having previously the review application, we've determined that there's sufficient information to approve your review. Great, thank you very much. And we'll call 2015-118-3020 Elliott Street, AB Associates, care of Nate Fredo. Ah, you guys are switching off. Yeah. Uh, all right, Mr. Prettle, uh, we have this as an application to raise the existing structure, sub structure, subdivide the lot into two lots, and construct two new four-story attached single-family dwellings with lower-level garages and rooftop decks. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. And Mr. French, the planning department. Thank you. Planning department recommends approval of this appeal as it would extinguish non-conforming use of the property subject to the condition that the proposed subdivision of the property is approved by the Planning Commission. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and uh, Mr. Pretel, is that condition acceptable to your client? Yes, it is. And is there anything further you would like to add to something record at this time? No. Okay. Zoning board staff have any previously reviewed application to determine that there, that there is sufficient information to approve your appeal. Thank you. Good luck. Next, 2015-105, 3604 Eastern Avenue, Verizon Wireless, care of Alexandra Bull. Hello. Uh, Ms. Bull, we have this as an application to install a telecommunications facility uh, consisting of 12 antennas and generator onto the rooftop of an office building. Is that correct? That's correct. Right. Mr. French, the planning department. Thank you. The planning department recommends approval of this appeal subject to these conditions. The antennas and related equipment where visible from or across or along Eastern Avenue must be painted to match the building to ensure they are visually unobtrusive. The panel antennas and related equipment will remain mounted as illustrated in the plans and elevations submitted to planning, and the applicant will adequately mitigate any adverse effect as specified in the report of the Historical and Architectural Preservation Division of the Department of Planning in accordance with that report's recommendations. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Bull, uh, do you accept the conditions offered by the Planning Department? Yes. All right. And is there anything further you'd like to add to the record this time? No. Zoning board staff having previously reviewed your application, we've determined that there is sufficient information to approve your appeal. All right, thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. Next, 2015 110, 1712 Alisana Street, Virgil Bartram. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. We have this as an application to construct a third floor rear addition onto a mixed use building housing a restaurant and tavern with live entertainment and dancing and one dwelling. Correct? Uh, that's correct. All right. Mr. French, anything for the planning department? Planning department has no comment on this application. Thank you. Okay. And Mr. Bartram, is there anything further you'd like to add to supplement the record? Uh, I would only add that we've uh, presented our drawings to uh, the Fells Point Re uh, Design Review Committee and got their approval. Okay. Is there a letter in the I, I have the uh, application form and with their signature. Okay. Uh, that's all. So, any board staff having, <coughs> having previously been reviewed, you're going to have to come into the sufficient information to approve your appeal. Thank you. Next, 2015 113, 3213 Foster Avenue, John Newman. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. We have this as an application to construct a two story rear addition with first and uh, second floor rear decks. Is that correct? That's correct. And Mr. French, anything for the planning department? Planning department has no comment on this application. Thank you. And Mr. Noonan, is there anything further you'd like to add to something? I was just going to ask uh, the question about the, the permit. Uh, how long does it take after at this point? I um, you'll need to wait until you get um, the written notice of uh, there's a decision that will issue in your case. Mm -hmm. um, it normally takes eh, about three, maybe four weeks from the outside. But once you get that, then, we'll get then I go back to the permit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, anybody have previously reviewed the application? Now you can go. Oh, I'm sure. That's okay. Um, next, 2015-117, 625 South Conklin Street, Fred Visnall. Yes, And uh, Mr. Visnall, we have this as an application to construct a one-story attached rear and uh, 
uh, one car garage, including rooftop deck. Yeah. Sir? Yes, sir. And Mr. Prince, is there anything from the planning department? The planning department has no comment on this application. Thank you. And Mr. Bistar, is there anything further you'd like to add to the subject? Right? No, sir. Going for staff having previously reviewed the application, we think that there is sufficient information to review here. Okay, thank you very much. Back to 115 120, 65 16 Pebble Brook Road, Israel Goodman. Yes. Good afternoon. Mr. Goodman, we yeah. have this as an application to construct a first floor rear deck, is that correct? Yes. Mr. French, anything for the planning department? Planning department has no comment on this application. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Goodman, is there anything further you'd like to add to the supplement to record? Uh, no, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next, 2015-125-1517-23, Southgate Avenue, Verizon Wireless, Carol Michael Weiland. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Weiland. Uh, we have this application to install a telecommunication facility consisting of one antenna with equipment onto the rooftop. Is that correct? Yes. Mr. French, Mr. Langworth. The planning department recommends approval of this appeal subject to these conditions. The antenna and related equipment must be painted to match the building to ensure they are visually unobtrusive. The antenna and related equipment will remain mounted as illustrated in the plans and elevations submitted to planning. And the applicant will adequately mitigate any adverse effect as specified in the report of the Historical and Architectural Preservation Division of the Department of Planning in accordance with that report's recommendations. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Weiland, is uh, the Verizon Wireless acceptance conditions offered by the Planning Department? Yes. Is there anything further you'd like to add? No, thank you. Okay, so the board staff having previously reviewed the application, I think there is sufficient information to review the appeal. Thank you very much. 2015-127-3814 East Northern Parkway, Michael Crowder. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, we have this as an application to construct a six-foot high fence in the street corner side in the rear yard, is that correct? Yes, sir. The planning department has no comment on this application. Thank you. Right. And Mr. Crowder, is there anything further you'd like to add? To no, sir. Right. Planning board staff having previously reviewed the application, we believe there is sufficient information to review the appeal. Right. Thank you. Oh, I skipped it. Uh, thanks. Uh, 2015 126, 1910 through 14, Light Street, Joseph Stummer. Good afternoon. Uh, and uh, Mr. Stomach, we have this as an application to use the first floor for the fabrication of stage curtains, is that correct? Correct. All right. Mr. French, anything for the planning department? Planning department recommends approval of this application. Thank you. Yeah. And Mr. Stomach, anything for anybody like that? No, okay. no, sir. Right. Planning board staff having previously reviewed the application, there is sufficient information to review. Thank you. Class 2015-130. 1207 through 15 South Highland Avenue, Lisa Junker. Yeah. Uh, we have this as an application to raise the existing structure, subdivide into 12 lots, and, constru and construct 12 four story attached single family dwellings with rooftop decks and lower level garages and uh, a new street. Correct? Yeah, right. Mr. French, are you going to play Planning Department recommends approval of this application subject to the condition that the proposed subdivision is approved by the Planning Commission. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Uh, Ms. Junker, um, does your client accept the conditions on the Planning Department? Yes, we do. And is there anything further to talk about? No, thank you. Okay. Planning Board staff having previously reviewed the application in terms of their sufficient to review here. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. <coughs> now the rest of our docket consists of cases which will include um, cases for which uh, opposition is signed in. And frequently we found that opposition is the result of either a lack of communication or miscommunication between the parties. And it can be useful to offer the parties an opportunity to uh, have a discussion and see if they can resolve their issues uh, amongst themselves. Uh, obviously, if uh, two opposing parties approach uh, the board on an issue and ask the board to resolve it, one of those parties is bound to go away dissatisfied with the result, and this is an opportunity to avoid that unhappy fate. Uh, 
Now I'm going to call off the cases where opposition is signed in, uh, and I'll ask that you just stand where you are, um, and uh, I'll ask if uh, the parties have had an opportunity to speak, uh, and if you would like an opportunity to speak with one another. Um, you, uh, of course, don't have to take us up on that offer, but we certainly do encourage and appreciate it. Um, first case where there is opposition that's signed is 2015-116, 3721 Golan Avenue, Michael Gallagher. And are you calling us No, yeah. I'm just calling to see. We have to met together. Okay. Any resolution or? No. Okay. Unfortunately. All right. Uh, and next case for opposition to sign is 2015-119, 4805 through 11 Belair Road, Alfred Randall. Yeah. Okay, and who else is signed in in that case? Um, calling again, 2015-119, 4805 to 11 Bel Air Road. Uh, you ma'am? Yes. Okay, uh, have you two had an opportunity to talk? Yeah. And uh, were you able to resolve any issues? Yeah. You were? Okay. Um, it was on yeah, it was. Um, why don't you guys come up? Okay, and I'm calling the case of 2015 119 4805 through 11 Belair Road, Alfred Randall. Um, all right, Mr. Randall, we have this as an application to use uh, the portion known as 4805 Bel Air Road as an art and jewelry boutique yes. with tattoo salon as accessory to the art and jewelry boutique. Is yes. That correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Now, originally we had this on our um, consent agenda, um, but uh, because uh, there had been opposition, it signed in and took it off. And ma'am, what's your name for the record? Okay. And Ms. Fletcher, you were able to uh, have a discussion with Mr. Randall? Yes. Okay. And were you able to reach uh, an agreement or a resolution to your satisfaction? Uh, yes, basically on the outside of the building. It was only supposed to say ultimate thing. There should be nothing saying that there's tattooing and piercing as well. Okay. Uh, is that the sum total of your agreement? Okay, and Mr. Randall, is that the agreement as you understand it? Yes, I do have a question, mm -hmm. though, if I don't know this is, um, I was just curious, like, because um, she said, you said you have a, you have a residence or a business in the neighborhood, residence mm -hmm. in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. I was trying to wonder where is the location of the residence pertaining to where I'm at, because five, like five doors from where I am is an actual illegal tattoo business shop, and they have flags. Well, that may be the reason why she's seeking to have some kind of agreement on that. Okay. But I think that the question really is if you two have come to an agreement yes, to your yes, satisfaction. Yes, yes. Okay. yes, and I also know that business has been there for years, so it's irrelevant. They've been there and they have not had any problems so far. Okay. It's a matter of having a new place coming in. Sure. And um, Mr. French, um, we've got the. Uh, the planning department had some conditions with this. Planning department's uh, position was that it had no objection to the appeal, provided the applicant documented the accessory nature of the tattooing in relation to the principal use that was proposed. Um, as I discussed with both the applicant and uh, the protestant, we noted that in cases such as this previously, the board had accepted this arrangement of accessory tattooing provided that the floor plan showed that the tattoo room or rooms was not at the very front of the building or by the entrance to the building and that there was no exterior signage which indicated that tattooing was available on the premises. Okay. All right. Um, so it sounds like Okay. Um, and it sounds like um, I'm sorry, your name again is Fletcher. Fletcher. Um, it sounds like the planning department um, echoes your concerns about uh, 
signage. And um, Mr. Randall, do you accept the conditions offered by the planning department? Yes. All right. And was there anything further you would like to add to something the record at this time? Now, I did want to offer this. Y'all might have any y'all file. The discrepancies I pulled up when I was searching for the zoning code on the building. Um, like, if you search Chrome browser, it may come up as a B22. If you use Internet Explorer, it may come up as a B32. And I actually printed them out to show y'all. Like, cause it, it kind of. We spoke about that. Yes. And we're working on that discrepancy. It's kind of a glitch in the um, software for the citywide map. When you go in on one software, it shows it as B3, and you go in on a different <laughs> software, but the same map, it comes up as B2, which is quite a difference. Yes. So it's like an anomaly in the software that I have notified the GIS people, and hopefully they can correct it so it doesn't happen again in the future. That would be a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, and just one thing that, um, mm -hmm occurred to me, uh, Mr. Randall, you raised concerns about another um, tattooing operation that was, I think you said, four or five doors down from you. Yes. Um, looking at our um, prior history, it uh, looks like in 1983, um, there was an approval um, to use uh, the premises noted, known as 4809 mm -hmm. uh, for a tattoo part. Um, so it may be that that other that, that other establishment that you referred to, mm -hmm. um, which may have been approved some 32 years ago. Um, but uh, your agreement uh, will be uh, reflected in the decision that um, uh, that gets generated, uh, as well as the conditions uh, that uh, were offered by the planning department will similarly be um, added into uh, added into the, uh, the written decision you gave. Um, since this again was on our consent agenda, um, was there anything further you'd like to add? No, sir. Okay, and Ms. Fletcher, and then, sir. All right, the zoning board staff have previously reviewed the application and found there is sufficient information to approve your view. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. We're working on stuff. All Next is 2015 133, 219 South High Street, Martin Marin. We're here. They're actually not scheduled until three. Yeah. But. Sir? I'm Martin Marin. I'm okay. the architect. Okay. And is the is uh, are there any members of the opposition who are here? Uh, I don't know. That. One person I think has signed in. Uh, no. Okay. Um, if you can have a seat, then um, we know that there's some amount of opposition, but we wanted to inquire if the parties had had an opportunity to speak. Um, do you know if you uh, if there's been any dialogue with the opposition to um, reach a resolution? We have. There's been dialogue, mm -hmm. but um, this we just were made aware of this petition. Have not seen it, um, and so we don't really know what the nature of it is. Although we've had we had discussions and have met with the next door neighbor. Mm -hmm. So, um, what what is it regarding? What is what regarding the opposition? Do we know? I don't know, um, but uh, I guess it, it sounds like. You're a little bit taken surprise uh, by the presence of opposition, um, and so hopefully then we can still hear it. And so if you can have a dialogue with them and find out what it is, maybe you can reach resolution and sort of resolve the issue. But yeah. At this time, you can just have a seat. And maybe we can get okay. It. I mean, I, I think I un I know what the opposition is. if it's regarding trash. I mean, we have we have a we can talk about that. So. Okay. Have a seat. And Hopefully we'll get here at some point. All right. 
Next up, uh, well, uh, first case on the agenda is 2014-503, 24 East Preston Street, Larry Lundberg. Hello, and I'm Tom Williams, the owner of the property. Okay. All right, Mr. Williams and Mr. Lundberg here. I'm Lundberg. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Lundberg, we have this as, a, as an application to use the premises to house two dwelling units and construct a first floor rear deck. Is that correct? Correct. That's correct. Okay. So can you both raise your hands and be sworn to nothing else? How do you swear we're referring to testimony? Yes. Yes. All right. Do we have staff reports? We have one report from planning. Thank you. Department of Planning reviewed this application, noted that this property is located both in the Mount Vernon Urban Renewal Plan area and the Mount Vernon Historic District. The Mount Vernon Urban Renewal Plan area does impose a requirement for one off-street parking space, which is something that is not subject to variance or waiver by the board. The property located in an historic district requires a notice to proceed from the Commission for Historic and Architectural Preservation for any improvements or alterations related to the creation of an additional dwelling unit in the basement of the premises. The Commission granted that approval on May the 3rd, excuse, excuse me, April 14th, I apologize. However, there has not yet been documentation submitted concerning the parking space. On that basis, the Department recommends approval be conditional upon the applicant providing at least one off-street parking space to serve the additional dwelling unit. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Excuse me. Did, did you say there's nothing about the parking has been submitted? We have it in the file. We did okay. not receive it in our office. That's all I'm reflecting, sir. Okay, because I believe it's all been, I believe planning has all the documentation. I've been working with Heather Martin, and um, I was told that I was okay with planning. Here's a 12 month lease. And I was um, told that the 12 month lease would be adequate for planning. We, I was, my last time I was here about four months ago, I was told to work with Heather Martin planning office and I spent about two months with planning and um, that was the uh, agreement that they came to. Okay. Yes, sir. You're the owner of the building, so are you, what's your status? I'm, uh, I will be the contractor, okay. and I have nothing f further to add. Okay. We're just under the impression that the one-year lease was adequate, and we were told that, and we're here for verification. Okay. Well, that's a planning issue. Okay. Um, so why don't you, you're here on... Um, an appeal for a conditional uh, conversion. Um, so why don't you tell us about what you're looking to do with the property? We're going to put an apartment in the basement with an en entrance in the front of which I've submitted drawings and you have the plans for it there. Uh, it's a small one bedroom apartment. Not small, but a one bedroom apartment with a kitchen. And um, Mr. Williams needs it to pay the, the rent from that to pay the mortgage. So we're hoping we can get it. He moved here from D.C. because housing is too expensive there and took a house that wasn't being used and, and put it to use. There's also a basement plan in there that shows an efficiency apartment that you could ignore. It's the one bedroom apartment. 
and you're looking at the other floors now. The application also includes a, a deck on the rear, which is permitted and complies with the fault regulation. Say anything now? Okay. Well, if you'd like, you can stick around until we're done at the end of the day, um, or you can call in the morning right away. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Next, 2014 557, 1625 Tame Street, Caroline Hecker. Slips into an existing mixed use retail office building. Yes. Right. And all those giving testimony raise their hands and use one. I swear we're part of the best thing to do this hearing. I do. And do we have staff reports? We have one report from the Thank you. Planning Department has reviewed this application. Note that this property is contained both in the Fells Point Waterfront Urban Renewal Plan area and the Fells Point Historic District. The proposal is consistent with the requirements of the urban renewal plan. Because it is in the historic district, the department recommends approval of this appeal subject to final approval of the proposed marina by the Commission for Historical and Architectural Preservation. Thank you. Okay, and Ms. Hecker, uh, your client, uh, amenable with the condition offered by the planning department? Yes, we've submitted our plans to the Fells Point DRC and we're also working with Eddie on the Commission for Historic and Architectural Preservation. Okay. And why don't you tell us about what is uh, involved in this plan? Well, um, I, with your permission, I'd like to proceed by way of a proffer, and Mr. Sisson can certainly answer any um, additional questions that the board might have. But this is a uh, property located in the B32 zoning district, and as Mr. French mentioned, it is in the Fells Point Waterfront Urban Renewal Plan and the Fells Point Historic District. It is also subject to the Baltimore City Marina Master Plan, which calls out um, a proposal for 32 slips at this property. The proposal here is slightly smaller. It's only 23 slips, um, but that marina use still obviously is a conditional use subject to zoning board approval. The property in total is a little over 1.3 acres. It has 234 feet of frontage along the waterfront, and it's improved with a group of buildings that um, contain retail res restaurant and office uses, um, as well as the waterfront promenade. There's a photograph from um, Google Earth, an aerial image of the property in the file that Mr. Williams handed out, as well as some photographs of the existing conditions on the site. Uh, Browns Wharf LLC is proposing, as I said, to construct a 23-slip marina adjacent to the existing buildings on the property. There's a site plan showing the proposed uh, layout of the marina. It'll, it'll extend about 125 feet into the harbor on a floating pier. It's slightly west of the uh, Broadway Pier and slightly east of where the kayak uh, place is on the waterfront there, so it'll fit nicely right between the two of them. Sufficient parking is provided across the street in the Thames Street parking garage. Browns Wharf LLC has a lease, uh, long-term lease for 200 spaces in that parking garage, of which 84 are currently committed to the um, users within the, the existing structures, the existing uses that are there. 12 parking spaces would be required for the marina use, so there, there certainly is plenty of available parking to meet the marina requ requirement. But as a practical matter, this marina is actually going to serve primarily transient boaters. Uh, so these will be people who will be coming in um, and 
mooring their boats there for the evening to enjoy the businesses in Fells Point. Uh, we met extensively with the Fells Point Community Association and that was their preference. Um, they preferred to see uh, a transient marina that would accommodate people who wanted to come to Baltimore from elsewhere by boat uh, versus a long-term slip rental. Um, so uh, the outline that I've submitted includes uh, the legal standards and I'd just like to proffer those and I'd note that there is a letter of support from the Fells Point Community Association, excuse me, the Fells Point Residents Association um, in the file and as I said this is part of the marina master plan um, but slightly smaller than what the marina master plan calls for at this location. There, um, I believe there had been a gentleman here earlier who we had spoken with briefly from a competitor marina at, at uh, Henderson's Wharf. We were able to answer his questions and he, um, I believe, indicated that he doesn't oppose the project. Any Unless you have questions. Nope. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Two thousand fifteen 101 447 South Bentlow Street, Sukhwinder Singh. Uh, calling again 447 South Bentlow Street, Sukhwinder Singh. Fifteen dash one hundred six three thirty five South Chester Street, Community Development Administration Bureau Darren Zimmer. Yeah. Hi. Good afternoon, Mr. Zimmer. Hi. Afternoon. Uh, we have this application to construct a two-story rear addition with rooftop deck onto a single-family attached end of roof dwelling. Is that correct? That's correct. I do. Planning department has no comment on this application. Thank you. All right, um, Mr. Zimmer, why don't you tell us what's uh, being proposed here? Well, basically, this is a vacant ha a property. It's been vacant and uh, run down for quite a few years, and I plan to demolish the rear section, which is approximately 25 feet of uh, building and construct a new dwelling that's slightly wider to meet the property line in the rear, which will also be uh, applicable within the guidelines of the CHAP historic requirements. Pictures of the existing, if you would like those. Sure. Looks like there's a side yard that exists now. Are you going to be building across that, or? Uh, yes. The, the yes, the side yard that is shared by the the neighbor. I, I spoke with him just over the weekend, mm -hmm. and uh, he seemed to be quite reasonable with it. And I told him I was going to work with him as far as reconstructing his kind of um, disrepaired flower garden and build him a new one in consideration for the work being done there. I will be residing in this dwelling. I'm not going to flip it or what have you. Okay. All right. Any questions? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Keep this.
Max 2015-111, 2730 East Baltimore Street. Clearwater Properties, LLC, care of Eric Thomas. Afternoon, Mr. Thomas. Afternoon, sir. Um, we have this as an application to construct a third floor rooftop deck with open access from third floor rear onto a single family attached dwelling. Is that correct? Uh, correct, yes. All right. Can you raise your hand, Ms. Swan, please? Yes. All right. Do we have staff reports? Planning department has no comment on this application. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Thomas, why don't you tell us um, what uh, you're proposing to do here? Um, we've got the access door right now from the third floor. We could build, go out there, build stairs up to the roof deck, and then have a 14-6 uh, by 16-foot roof deck. Set back approximately, I believe it's eight feet from the front of the house, give or take. I'm sorry, 10 feet from the front of the house, set back. These stairs from the back are just basically to get access to the to roof deck. Okay. The existing height of the structure is 34 feet 10 inches. I believe so, yes. And you've got the deck mounted up on top of the roof there. Yes, if the uh, if height's a problem, I can always slide the deck back a little bit so it drops it drops the top of the handrail down to a lower height if that's an issue. Also, I have photos of the uh, a deck that's two doors down on the neighbor's house, two doors towards the east. The already existing deck there. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Next, 2015-112, 1849 East 29th Street, Darnell Collins. Collins, we have this as an application to use the first floor portion known as 2890 Hillen Road as a beauty shop within a mixed use, uh, multiple family attached corner dwelling. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, do we have, well, first of all, can you raise your hand if you swarm, please? Oh, okay. Just a moment. Uh, 
Okay. Will all those uh, attending give testimony raise their hands and be sworn, please? If you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. All right. And do we have staff reports? Yes. First, we have a letter from the Colstein Homestead Montebello Community Corporation. Uh, they write that 1849 East 29th Street is a vacant building and not currently being used as a beauty shop. In fact, we show no current use of these premises as a beauty shop or anything else. Further, we have seen no plans for the proposed beauty shop nor specifics regarding the impact increased pedestrian and vehicular traffic will have on the community or how they are to be addressed. For these reasons, the Coldstream Homestead Montebello Community Corporation does not support this request and it's signed by the president, Mark Washington. Does planning have a report? Thank you, yes. Planning Department reviewed this application, noted it is in the Coldstream Homestead Montebello Urban Renewal Plan area. Notes that that plan does not specifically prohibit or restrict this use if it was a continuing non-conforming use. However, the department also notes that there is some record which indicates the shop may have been abandoned in 2006. The department therefore recommends disapproval of this appeal unless the applicant demonstrates to the board that non-conforming use of the premises has not been discontinued or abandoned. Should the applicant provide evidence of continuing non-conforming use, the department would have no objection to the application. Thank you. Okay, <coughs> Mr. Collins, um, uh, <coughs> did you um, uh, understand what uh, the, I guess the position of the planning department is? Uh, basically, you did. Okay, all right, and um, so it's going to be, um, I guess, the whole point of the uh, of what this case is going to come down to is whether or not um, the beauty shop use um, has been discontinued in the past uh, or not. Um, do you know, is there anything that's operating, is there any business or anything that's operating at this if space I, right now? If I may, I'd like to show you a picture of it. Uh, this has been a beauty shop since 1965. My mother, and I'm the owner of the building now, uh, she's been there since uh, longer than that and been a pillar of this community for a long time. And in 2013, the beginning of 2013, she fell ill. And during that time, I sent my two nieces to cosmetology school, and they have just completed that. And we was gonna reopen the shop. And I didn't think that it was a use, so when I went to apply for uh, continuous, which has had to be within 12, 12 months, I was, we was on the borderline that so it was suggested that I come down to uh, uh, to the board to get it filed because it had as a normal. But the building has been used as a beauty shop all the way up until 2013. And uh, like I said, I own the building. And beside it, I have a uh, Baltimore silk screen and embroidery. That's why I'm having a problem with this that has been, uh, you know, concerned by the board uh, and that was in 2005, and I'm waiting for my phone to load up so I can show you the premises. Uh, wow. All right. Can I give a C? You can go this way. You can see. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Can you show the pictures first to Miss um... mm -hmm. Pratt? I think you have seen it before. I had you around here before when Mr. March was uh, with it. Oh, yeah. This is the beauty shop, and this is show shop here. Uh, so, and this place has been there since night, and it just stopped in 2000 and, uh, because of her illness. And uh, she wanted her grandkids to. Uh, go to school, and I have uh, signals from the community that's uh, really in favor of this. They want them to open back because she, my mother was a uh, 
uh, the grandmother of that community and she uh, ran this shop and neighborhood kids for I don't know how long, so I didn't know that it had opposition behind it at all. What? Oh. Okay. Um, Councilwoman, have you uh, reviewed the pictures? I have. Um, I see that there's a number of photographs here of the outside of the building. Um, oh, I have some on the inside if you'd like to see that too. Sure, if you have those. Um, you said that your uh, your mother or grandmother? My mother. Mother yeah. um, had operated uh, the Eagle, beauty right? salon out of the premises. Oh wow! Uh, and these come from the records. Uh, well, I do show that. Uh, here they are right here. Well, we've got prior history that shows that. Okay. Um, going back to the first approval as a beauty salon use was back in 1966. Um, uh, although there's anyone that goes even back further to 1962. Um, has she continually? All the way up until 2000 and, uh, well, it was 2012, um, well, the end of 2012 was in 2013. And okay. uh, she fell ill, and uh, she was very supportive because she wanted her daughters to take over. But now my my sister's kids, I sent them to college school, and they have uh, finished and have their license now. And looking okay. forward so to so since she, since your mother um, closed the store after she fell ill, end of 2012, beginning of 2013, um, there hasn't been. Um, uh, any use made of the beauty salon? Well, it's still been operative, but I want to just be in the sense that it'd be tax dollars instead of uh, uh, freelancing or anything of that sort. So I wanted to make sure that they were doing what they were supposed to be doing, following her lead legally, so it would be de tax dollars instead of uh, any other way that was being done. But it has been operational uh, straight through, uh, except for the last eight months or so, I guess, or a little longer than that. But the, the shop is, um, yes. And we have had requests from um, the community itself for it opening up because in that area there's no other beauty shops and they have to go all the way up on Bel Air Road. And we had got complaints about Wanting us to hurry up to do it. I'm sorry, this is like a good one. I'm sorry. Okay. Um. This is one, Ms. Pat, that Mr. March was talking to you about. I'm sorry, I just had a back operation. That's why I'm kind of wild. I have a cane. That's why that's I'm a, kind oh, of Oh, you're wild. talking you Mr. Mark. Yeah. No, I'm just talking about oh, Mr. March. March on. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Victor, oh. I mean uh, Eric. Eric March. Okay. Um, while you look for those, um, we'll turn to your um, your opposition at this time. Okay. Okay. And then once you find the pictures, you can um, just take a moment, show them the opposition, and then pass them. Councilman. Um, Mary Pat Clark, Baltimore City Council, 14th District. Um, this is a residence in the Coldstream Homestead, Montebello, Chum area of Baltimore City. I'm here with Mark Washington, Executive Director, who will speak in a moment. Um, what I'd like to say, I have no personal knowledge of when this closed. I, I think that the, um, the owner has provided that. I don't think anyone's going to argue the, the, the timelines he's described. Here's the problem that we have. When we do have um, a, an abandonment, which whether it's 
intended, whether it's anyone's fault, whether it's a fire, whether it's a whatever it is. Um, in this community especially, we are very vigilant to try to make sure that the loss of the non-conforming use is official just because in so many instances, and not in this one at all, these non-conforming corner uses are extremely problematic in the neighborhood. And that's why we're here. That's what I have to say. Okay. Here you go. Yeah. Hi, thanks. Um, we accept the timeline as being factual because it does, in fact, uh, support, corroborate what we've seen. Um, a Google, a street view of the location will show that right now uh, the facility itself is not uh, being used and hasn't been utilized uh, as was presented uh, for some time. Um, <coughs> I, I think you said that it's been discontinued for about the last eight months. Well, no. The, the building itself uh, for close to two years, as you said, almost 2013, has not been used as a salon. So um, we would disagree with that assessment. Uh, I, I go ahead. That's not what I'm saying. Oh, OK. All right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I, I just I'm talking about just the timeline that he's saying. Uh, right now, there are two apartments on, over the top of, uh, over the top of this. Yeah, this well, I'm, well, I'm just saying to you that the property from that point, when I was telling you that the time that my mom's got ill, right. uh, she didn't want my nieces to be working in the beauty shop uh, without license or them being licensed. Right. So her thing is that uh, it stopped at 2013. It was actually that, that, when it. Exactly what I said. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, but here's agree. the beauty shop. The shop is so. operable. I mean, the shop is modern. Uh, okay. We'll, we'll get okay. back to that. Just watch. So, um, what I, I do want to say um, is to reiterate what uh, our council person said. We are uh, very cognizant of uh, these non conforming use. And that. Uh, every opportunity that we get to try to rein in some real community control over them, we will take that opportunity. Uh, we were uh, giving a very uh, uh, vociferous uh, show of uh, non-support for the uh, re-emergence of the beauty shop by the uh, homeowner that lives at 1847 East 29th Street and of course from the uh, homeowner that lives directly across the street, uh, 1901. In our letter that we sent, we uh, specifically said we did not support because we still had questions that needed uh, to be uh, answered. We did survey the area and what we found was something that I'm sure won't be surprising to you all, that most of the renters didn't matter to them one way or another. But for the homeowners, uh, they did have uh, concerns about uh, a facility coming there, the impact on their property values, what it would mean to uh, the neighborhood, and of course, the, the big issue is always uh, parking. Um, typically, uh, as it was pointed out to me by one of the residents, uh, when you have these type of beauty salons, and there is another hairdresser uh, right around the corner in the 2900 block of Harford Road right there at Hillen. But when you have these beauty shops, typically uh, clientele, uh, these appointments can range uh, for hours. Uh, and sometimes the shops don't close until, you know, well after uh, midnight. So those, I think, are real and legitimate concerns from the residents that will be directly impacted by that area. Uh, ours is a community where we have to move the car from one side of the street uh, to the next. Uh, and I think that they have grown quite comfortable over the last uh, uh, two years of not having to have to deal uh, with that impact. And so, um, you know, when we look at what that uh, invested base in the community, and by that I mean those stakeholders who have decided that they are going to buy and live uh, in that community, um, 
it was uh, pretty clear with uh, a few exceptions that uh, they were not uh, supportive of this at all. Okay. Um, other than the impact of the parking, um, was there any other direct impact? That yeah, the one I mentioned. I mean, let, I need to say this because it's extremely important to us. Lovely as this family and this gentleman are. I, when we got to be able to close these places down when they expire and by through abandonment. I mean, this is a large community. It's the largest neighborhood that I represent in Baltimore in, in the 14th district. There's about 3,700 households. And the biggest problems that we have, uh, really, on the, the consistently worst problems that we have are corner commercial establishments at the end of a group of row houses. Um, not every one, but when they are abandoned, we are there. And we are, we're, and in many cases, we're counting the months until the abandonment can be made official. In this case, does anyone know particularly when the we know we know what the owner has said, and we're not challenging his. Well, what he has said is that um, it closed sometime around the end of 2012 or beginning of yes. 2013. Um, now, the uh, the code on abandonment uh, provides that uh, there is a 12-month period, and then the board can extend that to another 12-month period. Um, Conceivably, were the board so were the board so inclined, that could encompass the period that's at issue here. Um, and I'm looking to see if there's any more information as to when exactly the use was discontinued. I think the, the I think the owner has the best information of all. He owns the property. It was his mother. We're not disputing that. Uh, but I can't, I, I don't want to be back at this board about one of these corner commercial uses that's expired that wants to be, you know, some other thing and have a precedent where I'm saying, well, what, you know, well, I don't know. You, in other words, this is important. This isn't a tool that we need and use. Therefore, I think we're going to leave it in your hands and, and, and hope that when we're back with one that is a huge problem, there won't be any precedents that get set here today. How's that for enigmatic? May I, may I say something? Uh, anything further? Yeah. So it, just to be clear for uh, future purposes, are, are you saying to us that we uh, are uh, burdened with going out to each establishment and determining, because we, we've given you clearly when that operation has stopped. Uh, uh, you we, mean the yeah. hairdresser? Yeah. Well, what he, what I, that's what I was just saying, is that the only testimony I've heard as to when it stopped, I think you said that you accept the applicant's characterization of the timeline right, yeah, is yes, that right. he has said that the use was discontinued at the latest up to some point in early 2013. Right, yeah. Okay. The board can extend that period from either one year, well, there's a period of one year, and then the board can extend that up to another 12-month period. Oh. That conceivably could cover the period of time that's at issue, right. which really makes the timing of the discontinuance very important. And so I'm trying to find out from either the applicant or the opposition if there's any more precision with which we can determine ah. when it can we Could I, should we post could I home and come back when we can get some clear information? Could I speak uh, in a moment? Okay. Okay, because this sheds light on issues that we may have to.
deal with going forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the purposes here, I think we're all in agreement that this place has been closed for at least two years. Yeah. Okay, so if the board wants to... Uh, well, just to correct that, right. um, I don't think that it's clear that it's necessarily been closed for two full years, for, t for 24 months. Okay, so... I, because, uh, for instance, <coughs> This appeal was filed in March of 2015. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's say that the use was discontinued in March of 2013. That would mean that the application for renewal was filed right on the last month of that possible abandonment period. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it could be the case if the board were so inclined to grant him that one year extension period, that his application for renewal could be timely. If, for example, the use was discontinued in December of 2012, 24 months from that would have been December of 2014. Right. And then an application in March of 2015 would be untimely. So, the timing of the discontinuance, as I said at the beginning, is very important in this case. If the only testimony that we have is that it was discontinued at some point between late December 2000, well, late 2012, early 2013, the board doesn't really have anything, any facts with precision to be able to determine that timeline just as a, for instance, if you're concerned about other cases, I think that, as this case shows, having some sort of testimony or evidence, and I know that we've seen it in other cases that both of you have been involved in in the past, there has been more precise evidence offered in those the cases to regarding. be able to determine. Um, let, may I just say that, um, I, I certainly hear what you're saying, um, but I would hope that if you decide that you've got the clock right or the calendar right, um, that I hope that this would be the only conditional use, that, that you would limit this to this conditional use, if you can. We, we don't want a grocery store. We don't want a bar. We don't want... We don't want a deli. We don't want. And it's a, once you're back in the, the non-conforming use business, somebody else can come along, you know, not Mr. Collins, but in a couple years, maybe the, the, it's so successful, this salon, that they're moving to, you know, I don't know, in the city, of course, but someplace in Baltimore City that's a little maybe fancier or bigger. And then there's this, this non-conforming use, and here comes somebody in to say, I'd like to open a deli. Now we got problems big time. That's why we're, so if you would please keep, if you would please just hear me. Uh, hear, hear what I'm saying, there. Thank you. No, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, please. Yeah, I just wanna add one more thing. And, you know, we, we uh, do not have the exact date. That's almost an impossibility for us as a community to do it. That's almost an unfair burden on us. So, you know, what we accepted was this timeline because it's consistent with what we have observed in the community. So if this is about what is ultimately in the best interest of the community, then what we uh, were instructed uh, during our survey was quite clear, that um, the homeowners in that area don't want to feel that additional impact. Now, we have to live with whatever you all decide, and there has been a history here of decisions that have gone against the community's best wishes that we are trying to correct now. And so when we have these opportunities to adhere to what the wishes are of the community to determine what is in their best interest, I think it would behoove us to, to look at that and say, you know what, 
in this instance, let's, let's follow what the uh, community uh, is in fact saying they want for themselves. And, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now, um, just Thomas. Yes. Um, like I said, my, my family has been in this area for, I'm 64 years old, and I was born and raised here. And uh, I'm a minister also. And it's, it behooves me that I'm getting so much opposition from um, Montebello and the, that community when we have, my family has been so supportive of such. And if the issue is that whether uh, we're going to leave a abandoned property to turn to be something that would be undesirable to the community, then by me being the owner of that property, I would make sure that uh, that doesn't happen because we live in the community too. I don't see why it's being opposed like I live in the county. I live right on 29th Street too and I own seven pro properties on that block. And if you was to see my properties in comparison to uh, properties that are abandoned, I have fixed up abandoned property because I didn't want uh, to bring down the property of my own home. So. I don't know what this opposition that I'm having since my mom's has been in this since uh, 62 doing hair and have taught young uh, ladies how to do hair. And it's, I just don't understand why I'm getting so much opposition when our goals are to upgrade the community. Because people used to come to my mother's beauty shop, you would think it was a town store, that they came to get information or, or they came to uh, just to pay greetings to her. Uh, in the community now, uh, was really stunned because of when the holidays came around that uh, they was doing hair in in the kitchen. You know, I'm t just talking to me because they were so wanted wanted this place to uh, you get back functional. It's not like we had, I own the shirt shop that's right there, the next building, the same building, but the next, that's, that's yeah, that's 2000, I mean, that's 28, 20, I mean, 28, that's 2890, 96, and it's my show shop. And I've been there for 15 years. And uh, until <coughs> something mishap had happened when they had the little mishap here that they burst my windows out. Uh, but this, I have kept properties up that were vacant. I'm talking about boarding them up and make sure that uh, no intruders or came to the belt. So I don't see that we are something that's negative, that we are a positive force to this community and been here as upstanding com community members for a long time. I used to be on the board before he came uh, uh, when we had meetings in the school. Uh, so I don't, I just don't understand this kind of. receipts, credit card receipts, something that would show us. Oh, I'm, I'm certainly, certainly. Uh, certainly, and I, I have even from the beginning, um, and see, I didn't think that I was going to have this kind of opposition when I came to, uh, I have two, three pages of, you know, community members that want this to happen. I mean, want us I, to. I, I understand that. I appreciate and, um, that. I and at this for, point. Well, excuse me. What I'm looking for is. is, is update receipt. I understand what you're saying. Um, I know that wouldn't be a problem, but I, I don't see the necessity. I mean, we hold over and they have gone through so much. Did I show you the? Um, did, you said that you want to show the inside. Let me show you what we have done. It's actually not. Okay. May I give you just for one second? That's gone. That's okay. That, that sure. Okay. So, so, in the letter that we sent. We said that we could not support this. We did not say that we opposed it. Now, what troubles me from what I'm hearing today is an individual who said that they've been involved with the community for quite some time, but never thought that it mattered to come to the community corporation to say, hey, here's what we're looking to do at this location. And that put aside, um, when we uh, survey the residents in that area, their concerns are real and legitimate. And our residents are kind and generous people. 
So if you ask them something, you know, they're going to go, oh, well, sure, 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 we're fine. And then we are the ones that get the calls that say, well, wait a minute, yeah. the beauty salon is still no open. Way. They're parking right here. They're parking there. What are you guys doing? And so what we are uh, uh, prepared to do is to at least listen to how uh, those legitimate issues that the community has regarding parking, pedestrian foot traffic, increased trash, because we have had, and I will be quite candid, some issues with what has gone on in the rear of 1849, and I did not want to bring the list of code violations uh, that uh, are, are on that uh, address. So we're not trying to uh, limit a, a possible beneficial business. We're trying to figure out if this business will first be beneficial by addressing and meeting with uh, the real concerns of uh, uh, the residents of the area. Um, I'll put this out as a proposal and um, you both will have to figure out if this is something that sounds working. Um, uh, Mr. Palm, um, uh, Mr. Bonaventure had asked you uh, about some information that he would like uh, to see and that it would be beneficial for the board as well um, to see that lend a little bit more clarity to the um, timing of the closing of the, uh, the beauty salon um, and I think that you said that, um, that that was fine that you could get that information but of course you didn't have it here today um, and I certainly want to give you that opportunity to be able to do that. Um, <clears throat> generally, what I'll observe, um, since Mr. Washington, you brought up this point, um, that cases like this, um, uh, and really pretty much all zoning uh, issues, um, call upon the board to balance a couple of things. Um, uh, in this case, you have a property owner who does have certain rights to operate um, their property as they see fit. Um, and um, while the zoning code does provide some constraints for that, there has to be a respect of personal property rights. Uh, that gets balanced against um, community concerns, uh, and there are outlets, as the councilwoman, you're familiar, um, that uh, are included in the code for the board to consider those. Um, uh, but when we do that, we have to make sure that we're not being speculative as to um, potential issues that are down the road or potential um, issues that may people may have with other businesses or type of business. Um, we have to look at this particular person because we're adjudicating their property rights. Um, now, I think that it may um, be beneficial if, um, uh, Mr. Collins, we uh, postpone this so that you can gather the information um, that Mr. Bonaventure had uh, raised. And I think that it would probably be useful um, for the parties to discuss, because I think, Mr. Washington, you had brought up um, that or is either you, Mr. Washington, or I can't remember. If maybe you would brought it up, Council. That um, you know, that you may want to have some sort of agreement um, that may resolve your issues. Because what I'm hearing is that there's not so many problems with um, the use that was made of the premises by Mr. Collins's mother. Though I think you said there were some code violation issues that do with property maintenance. Um, but there may be some uh, an ability to accommodate both of you. So I think that that, uh, that may be a productive dialogue to have while we um, uh, postpone this matter to allow you, Mr. Collins, to assemble your documents. Now, if it comes to pass that through talking, you all resolve your issues um, such that you're ready to come forward with an agreement, then the documentation isn't so important anymore. 
Well, we can't make constants. But you know, uh, well, sure, I mean, sure. the, what but you're asking me about the documents, let's yeah. just say that I had them in front of you right now. Let's mm -hmm. just assume, just for hypothetically, mm -hmm. that's that I had them. That still would not um, speak to the issues that that he's bringing up. And number one, we never had a problem with parking because the way the property well, is situated. Of, as and far the, as the other those issues, me, that's not really the the time that it was issue. shut down is when they had the issues with the um, the trash being in the back. That's the time it had because it had no one there. I used to, I was the one who came down for because I when I came down to the commissioner at the um, uh, environmental, she was telling me, because people, what they would do is in the block in the morning when they would come going to work, they would have their little trash bag and they would sling the, their back, their trash right in the back of the, mm -hmm. uh, the and keep on going. Yeah, I got really fined for that because if anything was on the side of the alley. She told me to put up a camera. I told her at that time I couldn't afford to put up a camera to monitor somebody because I thought that's what their uh, inspectors uh, what job was to do to go in the trip to find out okay. but My I'm just saying question for you Mr. Collins okay. is yes. whether you would like to have a postponement of this case okay. um, to allow you to gather the documentation that you need to establish the timing of the closing of the salon okay. would you like to I wouldn't that? mind doing that but I, I want to satisfy the I want to satisfy the community thing of the timing of the shop being open still would not address so I'd rather have a dialogue well, with I, him to find out can we appease each other that, yeah. then and we could probably put a little memorandum just a little memorandum of understanding together if the documentation shows that the board is within its legal limits then we could have a meeting where we sort of agree to a couple things about you know and and then we could come back so I'll, I'll work with you, Mr. Collins, on that. Okay. Right. And I know that Mark will, too. Thank you. Thank so, you. So I, I would just add during, during this period that uh, you would consider uh, just the intent of abandonment because I do hear the applicant when, in his testimony when he says his mother became ill and it was his intent to send his nieces to cosmetology school. So it was clearly the intent not to abandon the property what? but to continue that uh, practice. Does it make sense? Is it uh, fair to allow time for that process to play we're, out? We're, so, that, cons so consider as answer. you were in postponement, really you could consider. I would have you consider that, sir. It is very important, and I would love to have this discussion with you. You know where we can sit down and have a cup of coffee, kind of thing. Intent is not a factor in abandonment. Everybody has good intentions. I, I mean, I believe that in my heart. I'm not everybody, but most people have good intentions about most things. But there sits an abandoned, burnt out place. There sits a, a vacant building that needs to be fixed up. There sits a fraternity that's been a problem and now it hasn't been around for a long time. So basically, whatever people intended, and I believe in intentions, the code specifically points out that notwithstanding. And so that's why we need a conversation, because we're rewriting the code right now. And you all should have input around these kinds of issues, not just, you know what I mean, really. And so I hope we can have it. But intent right now, legally, in this code, is not a factor. Right. I've offered it for suggestion as whether it's up to you whether you Well we can't do it today, we know that, but maybe maybe later. I okay. I point well taken. Thank you. All right. All right. Yes. Take care. Best to you all. Mr. Collins, thank you. Let me walk with you so I can make sure I can get in touch so, with you. So um how would be re inform of the sure. you can when you're ready to move forward. You can give Mr. Tanner a call, okay. and we'll get you back on the dock. All right, thank All right. you. Have a blessed day. Thank you, too. Next case, 2015-115, 4001 Groveland Avenue, Leon Bridges. Call 
Calling again 2015-115, 4001 Groveland, uh, Groveland Avenue, uh, Leon Bridges. Two thousand fifteen dash one sixteen thirty seven twenty one Roland Avenue, Michael Gallagher. Mr. Sokolowski, are you uh, taking the lead here, or is it Mr. Gallagher? Yeah, yes, that's right. I, I will be uh, taking the lead here. Okay. All right. We have this as an application to subdivide the lot, uh, subdivide the existing lot into three lots, retain and renovate the existing structure as a single-family attached dwelling on one lot, construct two new two-story single-family attached dwellings on two lots, and alter or reconfigure the existing garage. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. Will all those intending to give testimony raise their hands in this form, please? Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. And may the interpreter also be sworn. Yeah. Do we have staff reports? Yes. We have letters from homeowners and researchers. The first writer, I'm a homeowner who lives directly across the street at 3714 Roland Avenue. I met with the developer, Mr. Gordon McKenzie, about his plans, and I would like to say that both me and my husband welcome this development wholeheartedly. That the style of the homes he is proposing would be in keeping with the charm of our houses, and I think they would look beautiful. It's signed, Sherry Hale Kolowski. Next, we have a letter from the Hamden Community Council. They write, we have met with the developer and discussed our concerns with regard to the subdivision and construction of two additional townhouses, yet he has made no attempt to work with the community to alleviate, to alleviate these concerns. We have asked the developer if he would be willing to compromise and only build one additional townhouse, but we were told no that there was not enough financial profit to be made in that plan. In fact, we believe that this type of development is detrimental to the neighborhood. In order to build what he would like, the developer is requesting a variance of the side yard requirement. After reviewing the plans and researching the property, we have determined that there is nothing unique or different about the lot that would require such a variance. Furthermore, we cannot find any reason other than the developer's financial gain to support the request for the variance. Another writer, I have been the resident owner of 3713 Roland Avenue since 2012. I spent most of my life in the suburbs, but what motivated me to make Hamden my home is its diversity, both its people and its architecture. Each street is a bit different. Each has its unique style. What attracted me to, 37, to the 3700 block of Roland Avenue in particular 
is its open space and natural feel. This series of single and duplex homes with wide porches and an abundance of greenery is unlike any other street in Hampton and perhaps Baltimore. The proposed three unit row house breaks from this style and causes the streets to lose its unique character. Another resident, as a resident of the 3700 block of Roland Avenue, I beseech you to consider the concerns about the proposed construction of two additional houses on the property 3721 Roland Avenue. As were registered in March in response to plans for adding a single additional dwelling to the, under, to the undersized property at 3735 Roland Avenue, our concerns are many. Once again, request has been made to erect, to erect houses on substandard sized lots. In this instance, the developer wants to add two houses to a property, virtually eliminating any open space on the odd side of the block. There will be a solid row of houses squeezed together with very little emergency access to the exist existing properties. Aside from the destruction of the visual appeal of the block, air circulation will be diminished. Parking, which is already abysmal at times, will, greatly, will be greatly impacted. As you know, this block of as you know, this block houses a fire station without off-street parking for the squad. There is also a school in this block, and accompanying parking and double parking of parents dropping off and picking up students. The alley behind this house is overtraveled, with cars from 3710 and a half Elm Avenue apartments, as well as users of almost the entire block side of rental garages. Some of these garages are leased by businesses for their company trucks. Visibility and speed of these vehicles is already hazardous to the residents attempting to exit their garages. More might just have a disastrous impact. The overworked and antiquated sewers and water supply lines on this block have issues at least once a year some lasting for many weeks of orange cones, metal plates, and jackhammers. There is, this also adversely affects parking and traffic situations. Another resident, since I have taken a closer look at the property, it's difficult to imagine how two more units will be added to that space. If he does go ahead with it, the already difficult parking situation will be made much worse if this gentleman were to come to my door, I would not sign the petition. We have correspondence from Councilwoman Mary Pat Clark. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then we have planning's report. Planning Department reviewed this application, noted the specific variance required in order for approval of three dwelling units to happen on this property uh, as proposed by the applicant. And the department's position is that it does not support the requested variance of the side yard setback that would be required to allow the creation of three lots on the property. Since there are many lots on this block of Roland Avenue with front footages in the range of 21 feet to 24 feet, and the applicant's proposal would create 16 foot or 17 foot wide lots incompatible with the as-built pattern of residential development nearest this property. The Department of Planning would have no objection to a subdivision of the property for purposes of allowing construction of an additional single family dwelling at this location. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, indeed, what was uh, what has been submitted to your office at this time was a sub proposed subdivision of an existing 51 foot lot into three uh, roughly equal uh, lots and uh, an additional two um, houses were proposed there There would be attached single family dwellings. However, uh, in light of the planning department's recommendation and uh, objections from uh, the neighborhood association as well as a few neighbors uh, 
the owner wishes to uh, modify his request to omit the middle house and only propose just for one uh, additional house and that would be dividing the lots into two roughly equal lots here um, if I can just get one quick uh, potential concern off off the radar here uh, parking will be provided off street parking will be provided uh, the uh, mod the alteration to the existing garages at the rear uh, would be to slightly reduce the size of those garages and permit uh, access to the uh, to, to the newly created lots uh, via an easement for parking uh, off street so parking uh, off street parking won't be permitted uh, to comply with the zoning regulations here uh, the proposed house would be consistent with uh, the rest of the houses on the block in size, massing, scale, uh, and details. It'll be a, a two-story, single-family, detached dwelling at this point. Um, sufficient space will be provided on all sides uh, so that nothing will be uh, crowding the adjacent uh, houses there. The, the uh, additional... Um, Excuse me, Mary. Pat yeah, it's Clark. my turn to talk right now, well, please. Excuse me, but, but this is a different proposal from the one that we hear about. And we have discussed that out in the hall. And we decided, uh, and we said at that Mr. Time Chairperson, it is my turn to talk board, at this moment. Excuse me. There is a proposal. We walked in here and we saw advertised and we have met with people about the proposal. In the hallway, you talked about going to just two lots and having a, a house and we said to you we would i said of course i would be opposed for my own reasons about green space the hamden community council representatives and neighbors basically said we would we would like to see that a uh, proposal that is presented that we can see what the dimensions look like before we go to the board with it. In other words, now you are beginning to ask this board to approve something we have not seen. We may not be against. We may prefer. It may even be by right. But we asked for a postponement so that the community could see what they're talking about because we have reason to want to, want to see with our eyes uh, what the plan is that the board is considering. I, I must object to this change of plan at the desktop. And I must object to uh, the council person interrupting me during my time. I'm speech. sorry, but I couldn't have us halfway through a meeting and hearing without saying this hearing is inappropriate we do not have the documentation before us i respectfully ask that i would be permitted to okay. conclude what i had to say all right um i'm going to interject here um it happens um in cases somewhat frequently um where as a result of um objections that get raised um plans get changed to um conform them more closely to um, what the opposition is looking for. Um, it would seem that the, um, that the change that's at issue here um, is in that similar vein. Um, that said, um, Mr. French, have you seen these plans? Not to my knowledge. Uh, okay. And that's what Mike can... I would comment simply that this lot is 51 feet in frontage. The applicant would have to draw a subdivision boundary line, which would not require a variance if that, in fact, is his intention. And that matter would be aired fully in front of the Planning Commission because this will require Planning Commission approval as a subdivision. Okay. Or it might need a variance. We don't know. And the well, Hamden Community Council can show you the email trail where this thing has gone back and forth. Okay. We must have okay. something in we, writing. We did oh, actually okay. write twice to talk about other options. Okay. 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 Folks, okay. folks, Sorry, folks. Sorry, my name is Shannon Rand. I'm with the Hamden Community Council. All right. Um, 
Some of you may not have been here at the beginning of the hearing when we went over this. Um, we talked about how the procedure would go for when the cases were called that the applicant would be allowed to go first and then we would hear from opposition. We cannot have continual interjections from, op from opposing sides. Everyone's speaking whenever they want to. Now, Councilwoman, I did give you an accommodation to allow you, you to I speak. And I appreciate and I would ask you, as you, since you seem to be ready to proceed, I would like a ruling <coughs> If, if I may be permitted, if I may be permitted to continue, I might get to that point. But I mean, I keep on having to deal with interjections that delays it. If you folks turn around, you'll notice that there are a number of folks who are waiting to, for their cases to get heard, and I can't have you all up here taking up everyone else's time because we can't conform to proper procedures. That being said. <coughs> As I understand the issue in this case, it boils down to a seven foot variance in a side yard that's being caused by a third um, uh, unit that was included in the drawings. Now, Mr. Sokolowski, you're telling me that you're changing that. Um, it would seem to me that if you're doing that, um, that would likely obviate the need for this proceeding. I can't tell that because I haven't seen anything. I'm also concerned the planning department hasn't seen anything um, because they've been proceeding to this point on the basis of a three unit plan that's now being changed. Um, there is a required subdivision and site plan um, that would have to be considered here. Uh, and because of that, I don't see how we can proceed right now um, with this change. I think that it is possible, maybe even somewhat likely, that if, depending on how you draw up your subdivision plan, that you may not even have to be here. Um, so, so that we can get to the bottom of that, I think that we have to postpone this case so that those, so the planning department can consider those revised plans your opposition can see that and so that we can get the issues that the board needs to consider properly framed. Okay. Can I go on the record and state something being the property owner? All right. Sir, first we need to know your name. My name is Irving Gordon McKenzie. Okay. And Mr. McKenzie, if you could come down to the microphone. Uh, I'm currently the property owner of 3721 Roland Avenue. Yes. And in the early month of March, I contacted the uh, uh, zoning committee uh, for Hamden and presented not one option, but two options to them as far as getting feedback on what their suggestions were. Uh, one was rear entry parking, one was on street, I mean front entry parking from the street. The only discussion that was uh, indicated at that meeting was that they opposed the uh, parking from the street. So my focus was to have the architect, Mike Gallagher, focus on plans and drawings for rear entry parking on site. I, I did that. Uh, I left the, the committee uh, hearing, meeting, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I have, it took me three weeks, three weeks to wait for a response from the community association or the zoning committee, and I didn't receive anything. I initiated the call to Aaron, which is the director of the committee, and then at that time, her indication was the opposition and the refusal to write a letter to the zoning board or committee uh, was because of the side yard variance. Uh, once I got that indication from her, she said, do you want to schedule a time to come back? And um, why do you, I need to come back when you're opposing that and you oppose that variance? So I got in my car and start knocking on doors. Uh, the immediate neighbors to the left, to the right, across the street, block up, block down. I spent three nights over there to find out what their input was. But before I did that, immediately after I got the decision from uh, Aaron, the director of the community association, 
I met personally with the neighbors that are directly impacted on both sides of this property. In that meeting, my option was either to build rental units on the property or residential units uh, for homeowners. It was discovered at that meeting that there was a lot of complaints about renters, uh, about alcohol, drugs, so forth, that they didn't want that. So I focused my attention based on what the decision was at that meeting that night to build the three houses. They seen the plans, they looked at them, they agreed to them. Uh, there was some concern about you know, how it will look, how it's gonna feel, what the develop, how long the development is gonna take, how long is this process gonna take. From my uh, feedback from them, they wanted the renters out there and me out of that house immediately. So I proceeded after I got the support from the two immediate neighbors of the drawings that they seen with the three houses existing, two additional, one renovating the existing, I started knocking on doors to the other neighbors, which is what a developer is supposed to do. So once I got that, uh, uh, out of the way with the immediate neighbors, I, I, I did a petition, which Ian has, and I had 20 names on there that are in support of this. Okay. And But, but my point is not the support or non-support, the opposition. The, 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 the reason I want this to go on record is because of the process uh, that is being presented by the opposition. and. I encourage them to submit me emails or notifications saying that the, the, the communication was there. Well, um, I don't know um, what did or didn't happen as far as communication between the parties. Um, uh, it would seem as though there was some sort of communication or appreciation of the um, community concerns and it sounds like there's been some sort of attempt to address that in revised drawings and a revised proposal um, but as I stated that because of the nature of the change uh, and the fact that um, the planning department hasn't had uh, an opportunity to um, review and consider that um, uh, and I'm also concerned as to whether or not this hearing is even necessary, um, uh, depending upon how the, um, as far as what the new proposal is uh, uh, going to be, I, I think that at this point we, um, we can't hear it until we get um, a site plan submitted, planning department can review um, and make uh, any kind of comment, and that the uh, zoning board staff um, can review it and determine whether or not uh, there's anything for the board to consider. right and this was the decision that was made this morning because we just received the planning committee's response to this case we okay. met we met with eric we met with katie we met with mr french on multiple times as far as what's the best use mm -hmm. the biggest and best use of this property based on everyone's response the plans that you have in front of you is what was basically agreed on and when i get this response this morning that the planning committee is not supporting it now i'm i'm in south baltimore west baltimore north baltimore east baltimore i don't know where i'm at because one minute they support it they have me draw plans and spend money next minute they're not supporting it okay. so i understand that that's the process i i really do but that's the reason why the immediate change came today because we were ready to go full steam with this asking for the variance i can understand mm -hmm. okay all right. Um, thank sorry you. that we thank you for that time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you all, um, Mr. Mr. Sokolowski. When um, I guess if you can get those plans to um, uh, the planning department, and then do you have plans for Mr. Tanner to look at? Uh, right now, it's just been hand sketched due to last minute okay. change, right. but yeah. uh, I'm familiar with the procedure, so okay. we'll uh, right. be happy to comply. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're and good. we'll be back at the board if um, it's required. If it's not by right by that new design. All right. Correct. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. I don't want to wait this time. But since he already misrepresented the time that he has to get back to him, can we at least give up the emails to show that we can respond? We can put that in the record. Can I get a copy of that? 
I do, not, I do not have Folks, a we're off the record, please. by the way. Anything you need, just please. let me know Let's we can make copies. Okay. I'm just more particular about the response to not supporting with the letter. Thank you. Thank you. It's public record. Uh, 2015-131, 2900 Pressman Street. And actually, before we get to that, um, we previously had um, called the case of 2015-133-219 uh, South High Street, Martin Marin. Mr. Marin? All right. Um, I think, is there anyone else who's here in opposition to that case? Okay. And have you folks had an opportunity to have a discussion yet, yeah, Mr. Marin? We spoke last week. Okay. Uh, any prospect of a resolution or... So we, we, have letter, we have letters of support from all three community associations, so I, I don't know what the topic is. Okay, well, do you want to talk to them and find, do you folks want to have a dialogue, sure. find out where you all are? Okay, just let us know when um, you're ready to proceed, if there's anything that's been worked out and the like. Okay. All right, great. All right, 2015-131, uh, 2900 Pressman Street, Charles and Vernetta Dixon. Good evening. Afternoon, sir. Uh, we have this as an application to use the lower level as a grocery store. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, can all those intending to give testimony raise their hands and uh, be sworn? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. All right. Do we have staff reports? We have one report from planning. Thank you. Planning Department reviewed this application which requests approval to use the basement portion of the premises as a grocery store. The planning department noted that there is a record that the property is used as a multiple family attached dwelling, which is a non-conforming use, and that there was a nonprofit club or lodge, which is a conditional use, uh, previously authorized according to the records available to the planning department for the basement itself. The problem that then arises is that there is a technical zoning code issue, namely that if the basement has in fact been made a conditional use, the board does not have the authority to convert a conditional use to a non-conforming use. However, the structure is still a non-conforming use in whole. The department therefore recommends disapproval of the appeal unless the applicant demonstrates that the portion of the premises proposed for use as a grocery store is the location of a continuing non-conforming use. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. French, you said that the last evidence of a non-conforming use was as a... Multiple family and dwelling attached, right. which Great. is a non-conforming use in this R6. Okay, all right. Um, Mr. Dixon, did you um, understand what um, uh, the, is the position of the planning department is? Yeah, I understand what, what he's saying to the point. I purchased the building 30 years ago. Okay. And when I purchased the building, it was a dry cleaner there. And I purchased it as a... And the dry cleaners was located where? In the basement. Okay. And I purchased it as a resident and commercial property. Mm -hmm. All right, so I kept the cleanest there until 1989. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't know the code, so I put a clothing store there. But I closed the uh, clothing store up, and uh, I didn't have anything in there for a while. So in 2005, I came down here to put it uh, for a social club. And that's when the board gave me the privilege to go and have a social club and been there for 10 years. So a lot of the old guys had died out, so it closed up. So I said, I'll put a grocery store there. I didn't understand that I had to 
change over, you know, I'll have that problem for a grocery store because it's a grocery store right down the street from me and she got a dwelling over top too. And that used to be when I first moved, when I first bought that building, that used to be a, a drugstore. And how is she going to get to have a grocery store on a one block down and I got to change over mine? Okay. Um, one thing, well, no, I guess that line turns there. Um, but from looking at the zoning map, what may be the case is that I do see um, that there is a, uh, the Jure zone, which is an R6 zone, looks like it borders on a B22 zone um, about a block down the street. Mm -hmm. um, so that may create the, that issue that you're, um, uh, uh, that you're talking about where there's another uh, property that has a grocery store use. Um, uh, but what it looks to be the case in, um, uh, in your case is that um, the last use was the social club use. Um, and that because you're in a residential district, your ability to use the non to use a non-conforming use uh, went away with the discontinuance of it. That is when you started using the social club. Um, and at that point, uh, that the board wouldn't have the ability to create another non-conforming use. Um, in that area. Um, Non-conforming uses, that's, that is a use that's not allowed in an area under the zoning code. Um, and the zoning code goes back to 1971 or so. Um, <clears throat> and non-conforming uses that were in existence at that time were allowed to continue. Um, and from the looks of it here, it looks like the dry cleaner was there going back to into the 60s. In the 60s, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and so when you took over the property, the dry cleaner stayed there. That non-conforming use continued, and it was allowed to continue. Um, and so long as it was in operation, um, it's allowed to stay there. Um, even if that, you know, if one dry cleaner goes away and then someone else wants to come in and have a dry cleaner there, they're allowed to do that too, provided that there's no um, period of abandonment or discontinuance, um, or at least a lengthy one. Uh, and it sounds like the, that the laundry uh, was there all the time. Um, but then when it was discontinued and closed and it went from being the non-conforming use to a um, to a conditional use, that is the social club, that non-conforming use or the ability to operate a non-conforming use in that space went away with it. Uh, and once that non-conforming use went away, the board can't create it back again. Um, there's only a certain number of permitted uses that are allowed within a zoning district. And if a use isn't one of those allowed uses, then the board can't um, create it there. Um, and I, I think that that's maybe, that may be where we are in this case. Um, so in a sense, you're saying that after 30 years I got a building, but I got a, I purchased the building as a commercial and resident, but at the bottom, I can't put anything down that bottom unless it's a dry clean or a social club. No, no, no. Um, there are a number of uses that um, would be permissible uh, within that space. I can't give you advice as to what you can no, or can't use. Um, but uh, if you work with either um, the zoning board office, and I can give you Mr. Tanner's card, uh, or with the planning department, they could discuss with you um, what possible uses you can make of that space that would be permitted in the zoning code. Mm -hmm. So although a grocery store may not be permissible, there may be some other use that you can have operating out of that space. 
as so of right now, it puts me at a, a financial. You know, I'm 77 years old, and I, and for me to try to say make that a apartment down the bottom, you know, like the two I got upstairs, mm -hmm. it cost me around forty, fifty thousand dollars. I don't have that kind of money to rent. Well, that's I'm the not only safe place I can be to make that apartment be a res uh, residential piece of property. Well. I don't know whether you'd have to make the whole thing residential or not. What I'm in, it may well be the case that there are other commercial uses right. that you could get to go into that space. Right. Um, but what I would propose is that you um, uh, speak with either the, um, the zoning board office or the planning department and try to figure out what use you can make of the space. Right. Um, the grocery store doesn't work. There may be some other use that might. Mm -hmm. I understand, I understand. Okay. Uh, sure. Your name, sir? My name is Mr. Pronell. Um, I'm a home owner mm -hmm. in the community. Um, I live across the street. What's your first name? My name is Robert. Robert. Um, I represent the community. I have some family names. I have a lot of Russia. Um, we don't have a problem with them having something, but the store is not feeding. We don't want a store, we don't want a bridge. The, the corner is Papa Grove Crestman. Used to be a well, used to be a corner that was turf. The corner is the gather. Nobody hangs on the corner. I clean the trash. We keep it clean. It's been quiet. I need to keep it quiet. There's seven now. stores within the two block area between Papa Grove and, 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 and Winchester and Booms. And we don't need another store. We just don't need another store. This is not a it's community. It's homeowners. I own my house around there. I had to fight so the kids want to sell drugs in the corner in the alley where I live at. I cleaned it up single handed. How long you been living there, Mr. Brown? I've been living in that area 52 years. I'm not as old as you, but I'm no. like, I need to protect what I'm trying to. Call. I understand that. I was, and that's my only argument. I know you. You I said know. he was going to turn I, into I, a barbershop. Yeah. But so back to the barbershop. Barbershop, that, I support you. I had the barbershop. The guy didn't want to get it. He okay, didn't want to put it. You need to get a barbershop, a store we can't do. Okay, okay. 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 gentlemen. Okay. Um, as I said, I think that, um, uh, Mr. Dixon, you can um, uh, have a discussion with the planning department or board, the right. uh, or uh, Mr. Tanner's office to try to find out what well, available yeah, uses you can use. And right. you know, I would encourage you to speak with the community association and your neighbors and try to see of those uses, which ones would they, um, which ones would they prefer? I've been and, there 30 years, and this is the first time I ever know that you was a community so 30 years I've been on that corner. You got to know me. But I keep playing, though. So, well, the important thing is, gentlemen, you know one another now. All right, okay. okay. All right, thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, man. We're going to take a five minute recess. Thank you. I'm Martin Marin. I'm the architect for the project. All right, Mr. Marin, we have this application to construct first and second floor rear infill additions, a new third floor with penthouse to access rooftop deck and use the first and second floors as a gourmet shop and one dwelling on the third floor. Is that correct? That's correct. Right. Efficiency. <coughs> Efficiency. All right. All right. Well, all those intending to give testimony, raise their hands and be sworn. Please. Please swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. All right, do we have staff reports? Yes. First, we have a letter from the Little Italy Community Association. They write that this letter is written to go on record with our organization's support of the above listed zoning appeal. At our meeting on April 15th, we were shown drawings and received satisfactory answers to our questions. We believe that this building will be an attractive addition to our community. We also are excited that we will now have a gourmet shop in our neighborhood. Developing and converting 100% of the lot and adding a, the third floor 
is in keeping with the surrounding buildings at 211, 213, 215, and 217 that have been awarded the same privileges and have been reconstructed to that extent. Under current laws, there is no parking requirement for this use. We look forward to working with everyone and can't wait for this beautiful building to come to fruition. Next, we have a letter from the Little Italy Property Owners Association. No, I thought this was the newer one. Oh, it could be. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, they initially gave us two letters. They have a second letter in. The variance directly relates to the establishment and operation of a business has not been presented, discussed, or voted on in public meeting, therefore, are unsupported by the Little Italy Property Owners Association at this time. The association is in receipt of a residential petition against the proposal, zoning changes, indicating that there is a need for dialogue with the residents in the vicinity. In addition to the, that, there is the letter from Councilman James Kraft indicating that the Little Italy Property Association does not support this variance and he supports the community in that matter. We also have received the petition when, with in excess of a dozen names uh, they write that the appellant has requested an excessive increase in the floor area ratio for this property, that by changing this property from a residence to a business, the appellant must have two parking spaces, uh, that by changing the residence to a business, the appellant will have to provide private trash pickup location. The neighbors do not approve the appellant placing his trash on the sidewalk in front of 219 South High Street for business purposes, and that 219 has no egress to the rear of the building. Therefore, the appellant cannot utilize the back door according to his plans. We have a letter from a resident who writes, I have lived on High Street for 35 years and am thrilled that the residential nature of this block not be disrupted by the already existing businesses. In my view, it would be a total disaster to shoehorn in yet another business in a property site that's too small on which to store upright coffins that cannot sustain the traffic, that offers no place to collect trash, that cannot usurp two parking spaces in a block where parking already having two cars per house that robs the street of yet another residence to business zoning changes that offer inadequate space for a business to grow. It's bad for the block and it's bad for the neighborhood when already existing business structures that would be perfect to house the appellant's uh, dream remain unused. If the appellant lacks the capital to open their dream cheese shop in an already existing Little Italy structure better suited to such purpose, the longtime residents of High Street should not have to suffer from the result. I have a letter from a property owner on High Street. Uh, please find the attached letter that they have attached from the appellant. It was stated that the appellant would get back to them with answers to the concerns. I would like it noted that, there, for the record, that at this time, neither the appellant nor his architect have contacted me with answers to these questions. This is not the first time the appellant has been deliberately unclear with his intentions. In June 2014, the appellant first approached me with his intent to use the property as a weekend residence. In October, without first consulting with anyone on our block, which is the good neighbor, which would, is good neighborly etiquette, the appellant completely changed his intentions for the property and blindsided his immediate neighbors by presenting to the community association his architectural design for a cheese shop. At that time, the appellant had neither a business plan nor a trash disposal plan. The president of the Little Italy Property Owners Association uh, instructed him to report back once he set his plans had set his plans. The appellant has not reported back to the Little Italy Lipa uh, regarding his property. 
For the reasons here unstated, I feel that the appellant has demonstrated poor conduct as a neighbor and severely doubt that he will be a positive addition to our community. And planning does not have a report. Planning department has no comment on this application. Thank you. So um, we were not provided any of those letters. Uh, and I will say that when we presented to LIPOA, the Property Owners Association, um, we presented our plans for the dwelling and the retail. And subsequent to that meeting, the president of the association, PJ O'Neill, um, told me that we didn't have to do anything further and provided a letter in support our project uh, the news that they he, he emailed me this morning at 10 o'clock uh, to say that he sent a clarification to mr. Tanner that didn't provide what the clarification was um, in the meantime we we have gotten an additional letter of support from the Little Italy Business Association should I read it or should I hand it to you so And then I'd like to just describe what we're planning to do. Okay, please. So my client, Mr. Verapapa, uh, purchased this building uh, over a year ago and approached me about um, designing a small gourmet shop that would, would complement the other businesses in Little Italy with an apartment above for his use and that's what we designed and we went to great lengths to uh, take the existing building and do what's been done for 150 years in Baltimore which is bring the brick up one more story to turn a partial third floor into a full third floor with um, period appropriate details for the cornice and uh, for the windows and make the first floor a um, storefront, an attractive storefront that um, actually, in my opinion, and our opinion, would actually make the street a better, nicer uh, streetscape. We're, um, this is not an intense usage. It's, a, um, it's literally just a cheese shop and we are coming here today to ask for one variance floor area ratio to allow us to build this and the use is a permitted use so it's not something that is the zoning board is conditional on uh, zoning board approval okay um, um may, may I? yes please when we received the application for the format shop, which is really not listed anywhere in the zoning code, um, we um, treated it as if it were carry out food store or um, a place where you would sit inside, like a restaurant, small cafe kind of thing, and applied the all street parking regulations to that type of use, which is one space for every 400 square feet of floor area. Uh, and based on our calculation of the floor area, 1,592 square feet devoted to the business, which would equate to four all street parking spaces. However, if it's, there's a fine line here. If it's a grocery store, there's no parking required. So one of the things the board has to determine is what it is, not just gourmet shop, which is undefined in the code. We have to understand what it really is. And then the other issue is the FAR, which is you mentioned, and they're seeking an increase in the FAR. Um, Can I speak to that? Uh, it, there's no uh, seating that's, that's 
um, being proposed. The little circles that are on the plan, those are barrels for uh, food items. And um, we have been calling it an Italian grocery, so, and, and think it would be completely appropriate. And also thought, and obviously zoning thought, because they didn't ask us to ask for any parking spaces. Uh, or a very <laughs> um, so that's that's the background on that um, mr. mayor the zoning code requires us to make certain findings uh, when we grant a variance I'd ask you to address those for mm -hmm. us, please. sure the f uh, what are you asking the, the zoning code requires us to make certain findings mm -hmm. and we typically ask an appellate to tell us you know, why we should make those findings to grant the the floor area ratio any exceptions, variance, any variance. And well, I, I mean, I think I covered some of that. It's but section we, fifteen two eighteen of the code, um, we have to find that there is an unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty, and that's the type of stuff I'd like you to explain. A practical difficulty to use the. Why the why why this why you need a variance is what's the practical difficulty or unnecessary hardship? Why should we make a finding that that exists for you? Well, we, we were actually uh, going by the fact that this has been granted. This exact variance have been granted for many other of the buildings on the block. Uh, this is we treat each case uniquely. Mm -hmm. But there are, you also consider precedent, don't you? Well, we need to make these findings. What I'm asking you to do is address why we should make these findings. We think we are improving the streetscape. We're taking a vacant house and um, investing a lot of money into it to contribute to the neighborhood. Now, if you're asking for um, Hardships. I mean, we don't. The, the building's not. Just to just to back up a little bit, mm -hmm. um, and I, I can try to clarify things a little bit, uh, or at least try to frame it for you. Um, section uh, fifteen two eighteen of the zoning code. Um, uh, well, actually, I'll start with uh, fifteen two seventeen of the zoning code says that a variance may not be granted unless after a notice and hearing, public notice and hearing, the board or mayor and city council, as the case may be, makes the following findings. And it continues to section 15218, finding of unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty. And it says the board or mayor and city council must find that because of the particular physical surroundings, shape, or topographical conditions of the specific structure or land involved, an unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty would result as distinguished from a mere inconvenience if the strict letter of the applicable requirement were carried out. 15.219 continues, because 15.218 is at the end of it. Uh, under 15.219 it says, the board or mayor and city council must also find that, one, the conditions on which the application is based are unique to the property for which the variance is sought and are not generally applicable to other property within the same zoning classification. Two, the unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty is caused by this article, that is by the code, uh, and has not been created by the, the intentional action or inaction of any person who has a present or who has a present interest in the property. Three, the purpose of the variance is not based exclusively on a desire to increase the value or income potential of the property. Four, the variance will not be injurious to the use and enjoyment of other property in the immediate vicinity, or two, substantially diminish and impair property values in the neighborhood. Five, the variance will not, one, impair an adequate supply of light and air to adjacent property, two, overcrowd the land, three, create an undue concentration of population, four, substantially increase the congestion of the streets, five, create hazardous traffic conditions, six, adversely affect transportation, 
Seven, unduly burden water, sewer, school, park, or other public facilities. Eight, increase the danger of fire, or uh, nine, otherwise endanger the public safety. Then there were a couple others. Um, actually, there were about four more. Um, but the beginning of that inquiry, then, is on the question of unnecessary uh, hardship or practical difficulty, which um, the law um, tells us are uh, important concepts and that there has to be something bad will happen uh, if the particular variance isn't granted. Um, uh, that would just simply make it very difficult to um, improve or operate anything on this piece of property. Um, and that condition has to be unique to this particular piece of property as opposed to other pieces of property generally within that area. Um, that's the kind of inquiry that Mr. Bonaventure was talking about. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, one, well, thing, okay. one thing that I did notice um, is that from your drawing, um, you talked about the first floor usage, I understand that, and the third floor usage as well, I understand that, that's an efficiency apartment. The second floor, it just looks like that's just an open space. So how does that operate? You said that, that is, there's no... That is more of the shop, okay. and it hasn't, it's open space because it hasn't been, you know, filled. Okay. It's, but it you said that there's no, like, seating customer no, no. area like that involved. There's no seating, and so. we wouldn't, you know, we don't, we're not asking for seating. Mm -hmm. We don't have a use that requires seating. Okay. We're not going to have, uh, it's not a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would say that in terms of uh, the restrictions of the site, it's a tiny site. It's sure. only 40 feet deep. Sure, sure. Um, and that it's not even large enough by area to um, for for us to you know fit. I mean, this is why we're we're putting in an efficiency apartment. Mm -hmm. um, and not a full, you know, one bedroom apartment. And uh, the apartment is for the uh, owner's use. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, all we're asking for is to expand the third floor uh, in the same manner that many other buildings uh, for 150 years in Baltimore have been. Okay, so I can say something too. Please feel free. Well, I'm Charlie Verapapa. I'm the owner of the building. Um, it's kind of a unique property too because we don't have um, use of the alley behind the building or the walkway. So all we have is an emergency exit for the building, which right now there's a little patch of a yard which I would, which is all concrete. I think it was a bathroom too, because it's got a stack in it. And uh, it's a totally just useless little, how many feet is that? Thing? It's a like seven by 12. Seven by 12 foot piece of property that has, there's no use, use for it. So that's why we expanded the back part of the building. It wasn't, it wasn't, <coughs> you know, that we were looking to grab more space. It was just that we got this chunk of property back there that we can't use because we can't use the egress. We don't have a, a easement that Ms. Crickio has to that, to that back of the property. And the other thing that, that we've been really careful to do, we met with uh, Tamara Wood uh, at the zoning office who kind of like, you know, was really very pleasant to work with and sort of guided us along, so to speak. And um, was uh, just access to the to the property as well. So the, the door is being lowered on that property so that people that are handicapped can get in and out of the building without having to go up, shimmy up, you know, three narrow steps to get into the front door. And, uh, you know, those type of things require additional space. We have, I, I have no intention of opening a, a cafe or a restaurant and s serving food and having tables. That is not the intention. We're, we're 
put in a cheese shop, a, um, a salumeria, and um, a gift shop with gift baskets and gourmet food items from, uh, you know, from Italy, Italian foods and things like that, and fabrication of, uh, of gift baskets. I think that, I mean, when we set out to do this, we set out to do it really well and enhance and improve the, the, the appearance of the neighborhood and the value of, of, of the, you know, the whole block, not just that particular building, because it's going to, it's, it's planned to be a historically accurate restoration of, a, of an old dilapidated building that used to house tenants that were, you know, you know, questionable, shall we say. So we're really trying to make something nice there that I can go to and spend the weekends and do things and work in a shop and that kind of stuff when I'm, you know, older. Not that I can get much older than I am now. But um, so you're, you're, you back up, your property backs up to the next property line. There's no egress or from, you can't go out the back door. I no. think you so can. There's a little, like, five feet of space, I think I saw somewhere. But, you, but, but this you, Crickio has the easement, owns the... Well, that's what I'm saying. You, can, you may be able to go out on a little pad, but you, there's nowhere you can go once you get out on a little pad. Right. I mean, it's just a... Um, now, you've got a... <coughs> The maximum FAR is 2.5, and your proposal takes you to an FAR of 3.38. Um, I don't really know how those numbers play themselves out in actual dimensions. I'm not an architect. Um, <clears throat> but, Mr. Um, <laughs> Marin, you are. Uh, so I'll ask you, sure. if, you if we were to follow the FAR of 2.5, um, what, where would that leave us height-wise with this structure? Um, well, to put it in perspective, since the, the basement is included in the FAR, the existing third floor of this tiny house would put it over the FAR. It would be just at about 2.5. And um, I think that administratively, it, it, you have some rules about uh, the exceptions you can grant to FAR up to 4.25. Is David McCoy, isn't um, there an issue with um, storage space for businesses and calculation of the basements for FAR purposes? Nothing like no, that? not for the actual footprint or the enclosed board wall. It does come in when you can do the park. Uh, space devoted to, like in the storefront, yeah. space devoted to storage, like your counters mm -hmm. and all that. That doesn't count towards parking, but, but a basement would. Uh, the, the, an FAR 2.5 allows for 1,600 square feet of floor area in the entire building. <laughs> and you're, from my calculations, and I could be, I'm not, I mean, I could be off a little bit. Sure. Uh, the basement is like 375 each, for the proposal is. First, second, and third floor are all uh, 562.5. And, and then you've got that little enclosed stairway at the rooftop level, which is also counted, and that's 104. For a total of 2,066.5 is what I came up with without actually measuring interior and so forth. And that's where we come to a 3.38 FAR based on that total. Um, and if I got this correctly, if I got your remarks correctly, Mr. Mayor, so that the 2.5 
um, FAR limitation would pretty much wipe out the third floor. Is that right? Right. Okay. And which brings me back to this second floor here that I don't really see anything going on there. Why couldn't you just have the store on the first level and then have what you show here on the third floor be on the second floor? You wouldn't need a third floor at that point. Then you'd be within your FAR. Why wouldn't that work? Because the store is so limited in space. It is tiny. Mm -hmm. and I understand. It, almost too, too small to operate um, anything. And so we feel that if you look at the renderings, you can mm -hmm. see the before and after. If you look at the after, we are simply asking to build something equal to the rest of the block uh, to allow Charlie to you know, have a tiny apartment and a small, sh very small shop on, on two floors. So you're saying the count. second floor is essentially storage? No, it's part of the shop. The shop on so two floors. So patrons will actually go and shop on that right. one. Right. It's a little space. It's but can, can I also say that you know, when we started this process and we met with um, Tamar Woods at the zoning uh, office is somewhere in this building. And uh, I'm sorry, good, good. correct. She's in the Department of Planning. Oh, planning. Okay. okay. Planning and, and we had we know, had a pre development meeting. We kind of said, what do we do next? And she said, well, next step is for you to contact the community association so you could show them your plan and present the plan. That's exactly what we did. We went to the planning. Uh, we went. We contacted them. Um, went to the meeting, showed them what we were we were doing, and people were excited about it. You know, I've spoken to several uh, people that live there and people that own restaurants there that are need are looking for something different in Little Italy for people because people can't go to Little Italy and they, you know, they walk around. They're drifting over from the harbor and stuff, and there's nothing there but. Italian restaurants and some boarded up buildings. So I per I mean it's just an to me it's an enhancement, but we did go through those those channels. We asked the, what to do and we followed the those prescriptions even with regard to the um the uh the square footage and the floor plan was sort of was based on the buildings next door to us and their total coverage of their entire Entire lots, which are the same same size as our lot. Uh, let me just ask you a design question. I'm looking at, at the drawings, and they show a full bath on the second floor. But I'm looking at the uh, sectional, and it doesn't. I don't see any bath here on the second floor. Um, well, it's obviously that's an inconsistency. The bath on the second floor. I think when we went to the renderings, we decided that we didn't need it, a, a second bath. Uh, for the shop, mm -hmm. so we took it out. Okay. All right. Um, I think we'll turn the opposition in. Okay. All right, ma'am. Uh, I wanted to speak, but if no. you want to go there first. No, please, Ms. Vladimir, please come. I am speechless at this moment. I'm very speechless. I am listening to you. I'm hearing it. And I'm beside myself. Our community needs this type of development. You're asking what the hardship would be. I guess if you. Well, I, but just so that you understand, yes. we're asking those questions because under the zoning code, we have to. Okay. Good enough. I, I, I've been in the building. They have worked very hard with us. Um, through all the steps. We've helped guide them, actually. Hopefully we were thinking we were doing the correct thing. And the hardship of, of needing this is precisely that they don't have access to the back alley. They need a handicap entrance. Today you have to do things uh, with the codes of today, not the codes of yesteryear. Um, this gentleman wants to live there. 
I think that's a plus. There, we have so many people today buying our buildings in Little Italy and just rehabbing them, making money off of them, and not living there. They're absentee landlords. He wants to live there. He wants to retire there. He wants to have his business there. The building needs the extra square footage in order for it to be viable for people to walk in. It, just the handicap entrance itse itself renders uh, the building that it has to be uh, brought down to floor, floor level, to, to ground level. Consequently, there is no access uh, to the rear. That's fine. They're, they've worked that out. They don't need access in the rear. Um, I think that they have done all the due diligence. They've gone to the community organizations, all of them. Um, I, I heard uh, a reading of protest letters. I didn't hear names. I don't know if uh, that's public record or not. I would like to hear the names or put them on public record. Um, we had a meeting. Uh, we had 36 attendees. And I checked off for you guys, the people that do not own property there, but the rest of them do own property there. They were overwhelmed and happy with this. They, they wanted it. If you take a look at that entire block, the 200 block, you have 207, I believe, 211, 13, 15, 17. They're all three stories with decks on top, decks in the front, decks in the back. I'm, I am flabbergasted as to why this would not be welcomed. Just so that you understand. <clears throat> and I understand. Well, I'm going to just explain. Um, the zoning board, um, it's not the same as, say, a city council hearing, mm -hmm. um, where what really determines the process is public will. Um, with the zoning board, um, we are more similar to a judicial body. Mm -hmm. um, and though there are portions of the code that are receptive to public input and what public sentiment is, by and large, public input and public will isn't really where the focus is under the zoning code. As the board sits and hears every case, we don't hear those cases and put our finger in the air and say, what does the community want? And then says, well, the community all wants it, so it's great. And the reason why we don't do that and why actually under the Constitution we can't, that is the Maryland and the United States Constitution, we can't, is because with each case there are individual property rights that are at issue. And it wouldn't be fair to a property owner if what the board decided would happen with their property was what a bunch of people who had no interest in their property wanted this property owner to do with their property. Because the board has to respect individual property rights. Now, that's not actually the end of the inquiry because the board has to be consistent in how it applies the zoning code from one mm -hmm. case to the next exactly. because <clears throat> we can't say well you know what we like this property owner over here so we're going to grant them a variance but then there's someone else who comes in and says well hold on a second what about my property rights I might want to do that you don't give me not treating me fairly so we have to treat everyone fairly and we exactly. have to respect everyone's rights and while um, there are many times when there are projects which the board, our personal feelings, may not be to like it. That's not really what determines the outcome. And similarly, there may be projects which we really like, but which we can't, under the zoning code, approve because the code has some provision one way or the other. Um, that uh, says we can't approve that use. So when we ask questions and we, um, uh, 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 we analyze the cases under, uh, the cases that appear before us under what's required in the zoning code, it's not in an attempt to 
show judgment or try to um, elicit our personal feelings about it. It's because we have to consistently apply the code from one applicant to the next. And we have to do that because constitutionally we're required to do that. And as a property owner in the city, I know I would want this board to treat me that way. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that all applicants would want the board similarly to treat exactly. them Exactly. There is a constitutional right. I just want to, it's not an opinion, it's a fact. Because this property has no access in the rear of it, it is a necessity for the FAR. There's no handicap entrance to it. There is no access to this property. So now he has to double from up the rear, in the yes. front, from the rear. Now he has to double up. This is a property he wants to improve and he wants to live in it. So you, ha you have to have room to live in it also. To say, mm -hmm. well, you could just do it on the first floor. Well, other people could have just done one house on the first floor, maybe created handicapped entrances instead of four houses up to the sky. And then it's almost as though we're looking at this and it's do as I say, not as I do situation. I need this board to be fair according to the law and according to everything that they have done. I think they've done it properly. They've gone to the, to the community organizations. They've gone to the meetings. They've expressed what they wanted. And then at the last minute to have this come in to me is wrong to say, well, we have a couple of uh, uh, people that feel that they were left out. The meetings are publicly noted. People were at the meetings. They've expressed, I know, at least two meetings that they have t attended with us. So other people count too. This is not just about the next door neighbor, it's about the whole community as a whole. We have so many vacancies mm -hmm. down there. If everybody's hands are held like this, while one person gets um, a benefit, another person cannot have the same benefit. To me, that's totally, totally unfair. We have many vacancies. This is one of the vacancies that is going to be brought back to life. And if you ever read the papers, one of the main requests in our community has been a gourmet shop. Bring, bring uh, Italy to, to Little Italy. It's been that request. No more restaurants. They want special boutique shops like this. And I know that there was one person who wrote a letter saying she would like to have, or he, whatever, would like to have it um, stay at home. Well, it's a permitted use to have business down there. We're in a B32. Uh, zoning district. It's, it's permitted. I do know that there is no parking requirement for this use. Zero. And I don't know how it came about that the four parking spaces uh, I were, think were needed. Okay, that so, issue. So, I think so that, that we, we can take that issue off the table. I'm not sure that it ever was on the table. Well, I don't know. I thought, it, I thought I that's mean, what he alluded you, you to. You shouldn't get because people okay. um, we uh, have to read in um, letters that people send in for mm -hmm. or against. That's to apprise the board of what people are saying. Right. I, um, what I'm not understanding is this: we now we have four community organizations. You know, how many how many organizations do you have to go to? And then when the decisions are made, then you have a, someone that's not satisfied, and let me get a couple of signatures or a few signatures and let me throw a wrench into this. This is what has occurred here. Well, I think how, that how, much, how much do you want from people to I'm want to sure. be in this city? I think that you're, if I'm hearing you correctly, I think that much of what you're talking about goes to the presence of why people in your neighborhood and community would be opposed to it. Um, I think that those are questions that are better directed to them Mm -hmm. um, the board has to consider, if people want to speak, the board has to consider those voices, mm -hmm. and so hence is why we read them into the record. Um, but I think, you're out, I think that the opposition has been waiting rather patiently. Okay, may I and please if got, uh, submit these? Yes, because please. I'm not sure that they have. This is a, uh, well, that speaks for itself. This is the meeting and the agenda, and it was emailed. It was on the Litho Facebook, which mm -hmm. has 2,700 members. This is the minutes of the meeting. And these are the sign-in sheet, sheets of the meeting. And I checkmarked 
there were five or six people that were not property owners. They were either a business owner without owning the property itself okay. or, or um, re long-term residents. All right. Is there anything further you wanted um, to pass up? If I can have a rebuttal, if I so think it's necessary, I would love to sure, do that. Sure, sure. Thank you. Any discussion of the applicant? Ma'am. My name is Marianne Criccio, and I am the property owner of 213 South High Street, where I have lived for the past 33 years, the Domimo restaurant, which is adjacent to Mr. Veracopo's location at 217 South High Street. I also own 201 South High Street, and I own 224 South High Street. Um, I would just like to start off by saying that when I first uh, met Mr. Veracopo, I was coming out of the church on St. Anthony, and Mr. Veripapa came over to me, extended his hand, and said, my name is Charlie Veripapa, and I bought the property next door to you, and I'm going to be your new neighbor. To which I was very excited, and I said to him, oh, welcome to the neighborhood. Will you be living there, or will you be renting it? Because right now, it is a residence and it has been working well for the past 33 years as a residence, both inhabited by the owner, Ms. Maria Rizzo, and then when she passed away, her son-in-law rented it. So there have been renters there. So I said to Mr. Veripapa, will you be living there or renting it? And he said, no, I will be living there. I am a dentist in Virginia, and I will be doing my dental practice on Monday through Friday, and I want to come up and live in that home on the weekends as a weekend retreat because I like Baltimore City. I used to have a house in Baltimore Hill. Uh, okay. I said, um, I'm in charge of the dignitaries for St. Anthony. I have to go process, particularly with the consulate that was visiting from Philadelphia. But, you know, let's get together and talk. And he said, I'll, I'll get in touch with you. That was in June. I hear nothing. No one on our block hears anything until we get an agenda in our door from LIPOA that says in October there was going to be meeting with a presentation for 219 South High Street. Well, certainly because we are aware that there's a presentation for 219 South High Street, I attend, as do other people on our block. And particularly the president, PJ O'Neill, who lives on the block also. When we come to the meeting, again, we are under the assumption that we are going to see a rendering from the architect on how the building will be rehabbed. When we get there, that is when we find out here is a drawing for a building that is now going to be a business, to which the first concern was that it aesthetically did not fit in with the block. If you remember that, okay, yes. The um, second issue was that now it was going to be a business. So because I own the business next door, Damimo, and I do have a 50-year easement with the city for the property in back, it was my question that where would the new business put their trash? Because trash is a huge expense for business owners in Little Italy. So we have worked it out with Isabella, who is on the corner, that they put their trash on the side, that Mimo puts their trash in back. Trash cannot be mixed up, or it's difficult for waste management to tell who they're charging. And they're charging uh, close to $1,000 a month for trash, okay? So at that meeting, Mr. Verapapa, nor the architect, had any plans for the trash. And then when there were further questions from the people attending the meeting as to, well, what are your business hours going to be? You know, are, are you going to have tables and chairs? Are you? They did not have any answers to that, to which they left it at that and the president, PJ O'Neill, instructed Mr. Verapapa and the architect to come back to a future community meeting to answer these questions. To which they have never come back. And when I saw the zoning sign go out, 
I reached out to them and I set up a meeting with them. They came and they spoke to me. And the biggest concern of all of the 15 property owners on that block is when the cheese shop is open, where will the trash go? And we repeatedly asked Mr. Verapapa this and his architect, to which they still, up to this date, have not told us. And I've submitted a letter as recently as this week in that Mr. Verapapa was going to get back to me on where he was going to put this trash, and he still has not done that. We believe that the only place the trash can go would be in the front of the building. In the front of the building, we have addressed our concerns with Mer Mr. Verapapa as to there would have to be, by code, 36 inches handicapped accessibility up and down the sidewalk. If Mr. Verapapa's cheese shop closes at 6 o'clock and he puts the trash out, then would patrons be able to get up and down the street of Little Italy? But also, it would not be an asset to the block, this trash. It would be a deterrent to customers in Little Italy, to Isabella's, whose customers sit on the bench and eat their sandwiches, to Damimo's customers that are coming back and forth from the parking lot to the restaurant. So therefore, I, I must say that I did not attend the LECO meeting. I knew nothing about the LECO meeting. I, I would think that the president who had set the agenda would want to inform the adjacent properties. No one, the Isabella's, Daniel Stewart did not go to the meeting. I did not go to the meeting. And, you know, in um, the letter from LECO, when it states the addresses that have three levels, those are my addresses. And 211, 213, and 15, 215 do not have three levels. And those, when the addresses are listed out like that in the letter of support, those are not individual addresses. Those are consolidated lots. Okay, so you have to take the square footage because I understand that is what is at question here. What is at question here is the floor area ratio. But in, in due respect to time, I don't want to take up too much time, but I would like to say that, no, I am sorry. Mr. Verapapa has not respected the process. If you heard, and I hope that Mr. Verapapa heard, the developer speak before this case, and he said, I respected the process. I went door to door, which is a, what a developer is supposed to do. Mr. Verapapa, as the developer of this project, did not go door to door. He did not inform his 15 adjacent neighbor, neighbors, those of us who live on the block, who have lived on the block for 30 years, and we intend to live there. I know we've said time and time again here today that Mr. Verapapa is going to live there. He is not going to live there. This, Mr. Verapapa is a dentist. He is a dentist in Virginia. I am a restaurant owner. Isabella's is a carryout owner. That is what we do. We do that as a living. Right now, the trash issue works for a residential property because of that small yard that they are well, requesting to fill in. If he builds this, if he builds a two-story building and takes it all the way out, he's in a B3 zone. He has a right to have a commercial use there because it's a B3 zone. You're you're still going to be faced with your concern about trash, even if you don't, even if the FAR issue goes away. Is that correct? Yes, the trash issue will exist if it is a business. The trash issue will not exist if it is a residence. It has been working 33 years at, because of the trash is held in that small. But, but the, point is, the point is it's a B3 zone. Mm -hmm. Yes, and yes. He, he has a and right it, and I think you heard here today from Madam President that there are many, many vacant properties vacant business properties in Little Italy. And why did Mr. Verapapa not purchase one of those? 
yes, we have vacant properties. We do not want Mr. Verapapa to take a residence. We do not need more businesses. We need residents. Do not take a residence. Do not turn it into a business. And with no business plan that we've heard of, it will fail, and then it will become another vacant business property in Little Italy. Well, if, as I was telling um, Ms. Waterman about the process and what the board can and can't do, you know, the board has to um, respect the property rights. Um, this is where the issue comes in. Um, because as I understand your concern, um, you are focused on a couple of things. Um, first, as you've said, I think a couple of times that you don't want a business to locate there. Um, and this board has no control over that because in, a, in this zone, it's specifically anticipated, and you as a business owner I'm sure are completely aware of this already, that there will be businesses that are located in this area. Uh, and they're allowed to operate there as of right. Um, so the board can't um, say, Mr. Virapapa, you're going to operate a business there. Your neighbors don't want that, so we're not going to allow you to do that. He's allowed to do that as of right. Um, and that's his right as, as the owner of the property, and we can't tell him to do otherwise. Um, your other concern boils down to, um, I think that as a business owner, and I understand um, uh, for both your business and the adjacent one, this is of a significant concern, uh, revolves around the placement of trash. Um, and that it's probably unsightly and possibly um, somewhat, I don't want to say offending, but it can probably uh, it's probably not the best experience for either your diners or the carryout customers to have trash odors wafting around the area where they're going to eat. Um, and you discussed how with Isabella's in the corner, um, there's an agreement that their trash isn't placed in the front, um, it's placed on the side, um, which then brings up the question of whether or not there's been any discussion about whether Mr. Virapapa would, could similarly locate his trash alongside of his fellows inside so that no one's customers are affected or offended by trash odors, uh, and that would address that concern. Um, there, you know, you're um, dealing certainly with the public right of way, so you have to make sure that there's um, uh, efficient means of, uh, of travel for pedestrians in that space, but it would seem to me that there's an ability to get some sort of an accommodation done such that the business, all, the, uh, all three businesses um, can coexist in this same block. Um, and, and that was my point because that's what I was trying to get to, because if you eliminate the FAR issue, which, which they could do by, by just mm -hmm. not building that third story, reconfiguring it. If they don't build a first store, then they won't have room for their tables on the second floor, which I'm very well, happy that this board is savvy enough to point out. Well, let's, let's just say that if, they, if, if the FAR issue goes away, they will still have a business there. And, and yes. I'm hearing you that you just don't want a business there. Yeah, I, and, and that's the first, you had two points there. Mm -hmm. And you said, I don't want a business. I don't want a business. Well, you're the and one that says well, I'm, I'm speaking for... 15 of our property owners okay. who signed that, plus another person on the block, which if you're going to read When the I was name, saying that, I just meant because you're the I one who's here talking. Yeah, we're not, we're not meeting. That. Okay, so. I'm telling you that everyone who lives on our block, not a community association that represents 15 blocks, and that person who's living on the 14th block, no, Everyone who is adjacent to the project we are, we believes that it, I, I mean and each property is unique, now. correct? So we have. We yeah. understand mm -hmm. who you're speaking for. Yes. So a group doesn't want a business there. The group on the block, doesn't Mr. Verapapa's immediate neighbors feel so, that a business will not work well there. But the other person's the fact, letter stated. How do you address the fact that it is a zoned commercial space that he has as a matter of right? the ability to put a business in there. 
if he has a business plan and a business plan that I would hope but he's going to live the there board, one day. He but wants the board to be. Has no we don't do business plan. We do land use. That's okay. all we do. Okay. So we don't look at whether or not they're going to succeed or not, because that's we don't have the authority to make those inquiries. Our inquiry is, is it a use that fits within a B3 zone? That's all we have the authority to do. Well, I think you've heard from every one of the adjacent neighbors, both businesses and residents, who feel like you that this is a unique property. And this unique property works well as a residential property with this small yard in the back that Mr. Verapapa would like to fill in where now the residential trash is held and then it is put out on residential pickup day. My question repeatedly, again, to Mr. Verapapa, and he has not answered it up to standing out in the hall today, is where will you put this trash? What will you do with this trash? Once he fills in his property, there is nowhere for the trash to go but out the front door. And out the front door, that will be a hindrance not only to the adjacent businesses and their customers, but also to everyone on that block, everyone who sits on their stoop in the summer. Well, Besides assume, trash, rats are a big problem in Little Italy. And I think that that's a problem citywide, well, in many areas. Too. Um, but as I had said, you know, if he were to do the same thing that um, you said that Isabella's does in the corner and put the trash on the side so that it's not um, uh, present there to offend customers or pedestrians or people just sitting out. Um, yeah, I think that that would be a possible solution. Um, and you know, I certainly for myself, and I think that everyone um, uh, on the board similarly heard and understood you to say that. Um, that you weren't airing your own concerns, but you were airing concerns of a number of property owners who are on the block, and this is their, what they want. Um, but again, it comes back to what I was saying, where the board can't simply ask a group of people what it is they want for a property owner to do with their property. That property owner has rights. And those have to be respected, just as your rights have to be respected as a property owner. Other people's property rights have to be respected. And we can't infringe on those rights just simply because a number of people on the block don't like the plan. We have to look at it more objectively. And that we have to follow the things that are laid out in the code. And that's why um, we asked the questions of the applicant that we did so that we can ensure that we are following the process of, and, and, and being objective in our, in a, in our analysis of these questions. Um, and yeah, Only because I, you brought up twice that the trash can go on the side where Isabella's goes. I would like to address that in sure. that it cannot because once again, waste management comes and they cannot distinguish whose trash is whose. Well, if if Mr. Verapapa is going to be in Virginia be, and he's going to have employees separately. that go out and leave the trash not in, if they do not open the toter and put it in, then there'll be a picture taken and waste management will charge you $75 extra for that picture. Ten days of mistakes are $750. Mr. Verapapa will not be living there. Mr. Verapapa will not be managing his employees. It is difficult enough for myself when we get a new employee to tell them how to properly put the trash out. Because again, your trash can go from $1,000 to $1,750 in a minute. So I am speaking for Isabella's and Mr. Stewart in that we had this conversation and he does not want or nor can it be Mr. Verapapa's trash on the side. So again, the trash is going to be in the front of the building, and this is not so, beneficial. So he will not make a good neighbor to so, the- So you're telling me there's no way that his trash can be distinguished separately from somebody else's, that the bag cannot be marked in such a way that, it's just, that 
uh, or, can. or can or whatever that DPW knows that it's assigned well, to there's that. no DPW it's waste, it's waste, waste management. management we would like we would welcome if it would okay, be DPW there wouldn't be this problem the point is your the trash can be distinguished Correct. Excuse me. My name is Masoud Masoudi. I lived in Little Italy for past 20 some years. Can you spell your last name, sir? Masoud Masoudi. M A S O O D M A S O O D I. Okay. Excuse me. Why we are encouraging anybody or anyone to put the trash in the sidewalk? Sidewalk is for sidewalk, for walk. People sit there, people eat there. Why we are encouraging anyone to put trash in the streets? I don't think anybody. You're talking about it. I don't think trash has to go to the no, sidewalk. That's what I asked was, Isabella's is already putting their trash on the side. Can this gentleman not do the same, but mark his cans separately so okay. they can be distinguished? They put two trash cans. How many they going to put? Four, five, six. Can you control that? Can you tell them how that, many? That, they're but that wasn't. There? That wasn't. Would there be space for handicap accessible? When you put the trash on the sidewalk, you have to leave 36 okay. inches. Okay. Um, the the, 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 the questions that I'm not, I, I like to question that I like to point. ask, and I, I like to see that because I heard this. This this is starting. I know that my has nothing to do with zoning, but this is started with I want to have a cheese shop. Then I heard gift shop. Then I heard items from Italy. Things are changing every day. I hear something brand new going to add it to this building. First, it was upstairs apartment, second floor apartment, cheese shop downstairs. Now, nothing in the between, something upstairs, and downstairs going to be orme shop, things from Italy, gift shop. Are you going to be there two years from now to come and say what your decision end up to be look like? Because the person who is saying something is going to do something one year from now. Are you going to be there to see your results of your decision? Yeah. I think what he's saying is I only hope that the board would be sympathetic to the immediate people who live there as to what this very well may become and that quite frankly we do not see Mr. Verapapa as a good neighbor because he has not been forthcoming with information up to this point. Okay, I'll have to leave it there. May and I please because I, uh, I, I uh, need to correct some things, please. Ms. Blatterman. I was going to give the applicant the opportunity to respond. Okay. If the applicant would like to incorporate your remarks, you. the, it is in their discretion to do so. Um, I would ask that you keep those remarks short as members of the board do have appointments that are impending after five o'clock. I, 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 I know that there's an easy resolution to the tr this trash issue. I know that that's not what this zoning board is about. I think that while Mrs. Criccio <laughs> speculates more on negative things that can happen, I prefer to speculate on positive things that can happen. And uh, like I said before, we went through all the protocols that Ms. Wood instructed us to, to go through in the, you know, letting everybody in the community know what we were doing. We met with the different community associations. <coughs> and as a matter of fact, when we presented to the LAPOA group, we were told that a letter was forthcoming. We didn't, I wasn't told to come back and answer, I answered questions. I finished my talk with, are there any more questions? You know, and, and uh, Mr. Marin was at that meeting too. And Mr. O'Neill said, when Mr. Marin call, contacted him, is there anything else that we need to do? He said, no, a, a letter's forthcoming. And, um, you know, that's, that's about it. Okay. That's all I have to say. Thanks very much for all your time. I appreciate so you it. That you've answered all of the questions. The question of trash still has not been answered. Well, what, this that is a zoning a thing. This is not a trash meeting. But it's a topic That's that close. was brought up in the I community. Think. Yeah, this discussion should come this way, not this sure. way. Sure. Can, can. Yeah, go ahead. Hi. Uh, can I just Brief. come in? I think I can maybe solve this. Because um, we also have a restaurant. We have collection every night. 
because obviously this is a health department issue. This is not a zoning department issue. So that should not even come into play. I want to clarify one thing. Isabella's trash is on a public right of way. They're correct because they're not given access to the easement behind their property. So they're locked out of that easement and those two trash cans are in front of a public park. They're illegally putting their trash. It's not even on their property. It's on public right of way. And we are good neighbors and we've tried very hard to work with everyone. So we leave those two trash cans alone even though they smell. I don't I, I don't want this to be a, a, an argument between us. I want this to be the right thing. The trash is no issue. They're going to get it removed every day, every evening. They don't, the health department code says you can't leave it in the premises overnight. So there is a way because there are other trash companies that are recognized as ours is we get our trash removed, not because we have to, because we want to, because of the rats. We get it removed every night. So that is a non-issue before this zoning board. And to have Isabella's to say we made arrangements with Isabella's is incorrect. They didn't make arrangements. They were locked out of that easement, and now Isabella's has their trash on public property. That's not fair to us because a lot of times the trash cans are wide open. I have pictures here of trash cans that are wide open. We have to look at that as neighbors and as people. We count too. I may be a half a block or block away. I count too. We play in the public park. We, we work in the public park. Th those considerations aren't taken uh, in our behalf. So to worry about this man's trash is, is ridiculous for this board to worry about. He has a constitutional right to put a business there. He wants to make a beautiful building and then not compete with the restaurant. And he doesn't have to be forced to buy another vacant building that wants a million dollars. Uh, maybe he, he wants something small. That's his right. So I, I appreciate your time. I apologize. Uh, I think to say to somebody, you need to have a residence there because that's what we want on this block is wrong when the zoning code allows him to have a business. And that's what he paid for on that piece of property to put a business in there. Thank you. Thank you. If I just may go on record two sentences, that Mr. Verapapa has requested an excessive increase of the floor area ratio of this property. There is nothing unique about this property to justify the said increase. Therefore, we would like the request that the zoning board deny Mr. Vera's Papa's request. And this is signed by all 15 neighbors that are on the block. It is supported by a letter from LIPOA, the community organization, and is supported by a letter from Councilman Kraft. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and with that, we're off the record. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, which ones did we want to talk about? Uh, I personally don't want to do any. Okay, do you have any other questions? Okay. Besides that one? long-term lease and the lease that they were being required to enter into was one that had been requested by the planning department and they were satisfied with the length of that. Okay. So they said, yeah, the 
uh, in that district, you need, under the zoning code, you need one space for every four dwellings. Mm -hmm. They have two dwellings, which wouldn't trigger any spaces. So it's not an, a variance of the zoning code that they're seeking. And if planning is willing to accept their lease, then they should be able to get a permit. Pretty much what I found out. Yeah, if they don't accept it, they still have that hurdle to overcome. And then um, they also had to go to CHAP, is that right? They've already done that. Okay. Uh, the time we wrote the memo, that was still pending. The interval commission actually approved the modification. Okay. All right. Um, the, um, the one on Baltimore Street, the height variance for the deck. Um, the thing I noticed is that the house, uh, the it's already I guess as built, it's at 37 feet, um, so it already projects above that. Um, there's no enclosure that's associated with it. Um, you know, it, it's sort of in there with one of those technical violations. My personal thought on that is is that an open deck I don't think should be I don't think that should count because um, there's no living space it's like the same thing if you were out on your roof um, so I didn't have so it's a technical violation but I'm I was okay with it. yeah in yeah. fact it was, it's it was it seemed to be set back far enough from the front that you really couldn't see it yeah yeah. Um, then we come to. <laughs> are there any others? Oh yeah, Roland Avenue. What are we doing with that? <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, all right. <sighs> yes. Still be going on at this point. Um, <clears throat> okay, so for High Street, um, I don't know. Every time I talk myself into one thing, I talk myself into the other one. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure that it was resolved what's going on with that middle space. I guess they're saying that they're going to use that as more space for the shop. Um, that's an awful lot of cheese. I, you know, <laughs> I, I have, I just, I'm just the, uh, well, it's the, square feet. Yeah, it's what? the gift baskets and all that other it's stuff too. Have, have you ever been in a salon area in Italy? They're tiny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even if it was a gift shop, it's retail sales. That's a permitted use of the feet. Right, sure. Yeah, I'm not worried about the use. I'm not worried about the use. Yeah. I'm just talking about the, I mean, the FAR variance and the necessity for it. Um, if they put tables in there, then it, then it triggers parking. Right. Well, yeah, but those are the other issues. I mean, getting back to the, you know, the need for the FAR variance and that, you know, could you trade out that <laughs> second floor of what you have on the third floor? So you have storage in the basement. Yeah. So, you, you know, you can store whatever. The basement ceiling it's going to be lowered because they have to, to lower the lower first floor by four feet. 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 So or you just can underpin the foundation and go down. You That's could. right. You could. Yes. You just, it's just money. Yeah. The peaked roof on the existing third floor mm -hmm. is pretty much uninhabitable. 
because yes. the slope of the roof, roof. Yes. takes really away spinning. habitable space. Right. Right. Yes. So by squaring that off, is basically what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They increase the floor area, the habitable floor area, uh, which allows them to modernize the property and solve a lot of systems issue like plumbing and electricity but it really doesn't have anything to do with the opposition is concerned about. Right. Well, <laughs> well and one of the questions I asked David is um, will they be able to get a building permit because to have to get to the apartment no matter where it winds yes. up you have you to go, go through, through the through. store and yeah. David tells me there's an exception for owner occupied mm -hmm. apartments. I'm all for this one. It's, um, I'm being talked into it, I think. It's uh, definitely <laughs> unique. I mean, to, there's not a whole lot of businesses that they can put onto that first floor. <laughs> sure. Or into the first floor because it's a tiny. Mm -hmm. so, a B3 is regional. Yeah, it is. I know. I know. Yeah. That's why I, I couldn't get right. uh, her to acknowledge that it's of course, the owner is now very much on notice that if he tries to stick one chair up there, somebody's going to... Yes. Yeah. The boyfriend will be there before the first bus is there. So All I know is to her question about will we be there, I'm likely to patronize the store. <laughs> yeah, well, I will too. <laughs> and I think it's a nice addition to... The, the, the focus of the Transform Baltimore is to have generic uses. Mm -hmm. So there'd be probably a more variety of uses that they could go once the new code comes in. Right. Space. Right. Yeah, because they're, they're not going to the restriction of if it's not listed, it's prohibited. Yes. It's going to be, if it's a retail. It's permitted. permitted, yes. But that's all we said in the really. Yeah, so but I was going to uh, say, well, where's your crystal ball on the map? Right. On the wind, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I do like the design. It doesn't have anything to do with what we're doing right. here, and but the design really fit in nicely, I thought. Right, you're not going up any higher than, and right. it's not going to be an eyesore on the outside. I know. They just don't want that. Mr. just a little background. Called the mayor. Want to know who she should talk to? She called Colin Tolbert, mm -hmm. the guy I report to. Mm -hmm. He told her to call me. <laughs> <laughs> and you said to the board. And basically, I just told her what the code says. I didn't take, you know, one side or the other. But that's where she got the FAR issues. And, uh, I mean, I told both sides. It wasn't just that's how it evolved. But it, it isn't our challenge to decide whether it's for him it's unique enough for her chip well, enough to. Yeah, and that's how I wanted to. I wanted, to me, the professional here yes. was the architect. He should have yeah. known yes. what I was talking about. Yes, and he was clearly yeah. prepared on that. I mean, I, to me, I've got, to me, I've got the, um, it, why they're asking for it um, because of the space issue. I think that if you look at the map, you can make an argument that it's unique because most of, there's only a certain number of these properties that are cut off like this. Most of the others are full depth lots. Um, so I think that that makes it unique. But the thing I come back to is that, you know, if, is there a hardship that's created if you lose that second floor and it has to be in, and you just simply put that apartment you, there? You have to get to the point where Jay is that the first floor is too small to support the business. That's where I am. It's just, just the building is too tiny. <laughs> what was that? Did anyone actually say that? Well, he did. He, uh, the owner of the property said that it was such a small space that no, 
Yeah, but I mean, is it is it not is it out of bounds for us to help them get there? He said. <laughs> Well, the board has to find it, but it has to be supported by evidence. <laughs> Damn it, I need to get out of here. I'm ready to get. All right, all right. I'm going to make this up as I, well, I'm going to decide this as we go through this. All right, ready? <laughs> David, you set? Yeah. All right, 2014-503, 24 East Preston Street. Uh, uh, I'm a yes uh, with the condition that the property owner maintain one uh, parking space. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, this is all Marty's fault, by the way, mm. because if he was here, it might have be irrelevant. 2014-538 was postponed. 2014-557. Uh, 1625 Thames Street, uh, I'm a yes with the, that was another, did they already completed CHAP or were they, no, they okay. They need CHAP. The, yeah, they need CHAP and they've already got the lease for parking, so. Uh, I'm a yes uh, with the requirement um, uh, from the planning department that they go uh, through the CHAP process. Yes. 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 2015 67 20, uh, 208 Lloyd Street was by consent. 2015 90 514 East 25th Street uh, was by consent uh, with planning department's uh, um, standard conditions. Uh, 2015 91 1415 Bush Street uh, was by consent with planning department conditions. 2015-95, 3501 through 11 O'Donnell Street was postponed. 2015-101, 447 South Bentlow Street was no show. 2000. Are we discussing? Uh, yeah, has there been any discussion with them? I mean, I've got that that there was an expired use issue with that. They planning. I guess they received the report that requested approval. But they may have given up. I don't know. They I didn't mean, contact us. I, I would suggest we dismiss for both the no shows, except if they call tomorrow with a really good reason. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. 2015 dash 103. 2015 dash 103. 2400 uh, Boston Street. I'm a yes uh, with uh, planning department conditions. I mean, I mean, it's by consent. Yeah. Uh, consent, yeah. 2015-105, um, 3604 Eastern Avenue uh, was by consent uh, with planning department standard conditions for cell phone towers. 2015-106, 335 South Chester Street. Um, I'm a yes. Yes. 2015-108, uh, 801 uh, through 09 Eastern Avenue was postponed. 2015 110 1712 Alessandro Street that was by consent. 2015 111 uh, 2730 East Baltimore Street. Uh, I'm a yes. 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 2015 112 1849 East 29th Street uh, was uh, postponed. 2015 113 13 Foster Avenue was by consent. 2015-115, 4001 Groveland Avenue, uh, it was a no-show. 2015 Go back, back up a minute. 2015-113, Foster Avenue? Consent. No, it's content. 113, no, yeah, it was by consent. I'm sorry, I got a note going on here that it was postponed. I don't know what I'm doing. Sure. 2015-116, uh, 3721 Roland Avenue was postponed. 2015-117, 625 South Conklin Street was by consent. 2015-118, uh, 3020 Elliott Street uh, was by consent. Uh, you've got plenty of apartment conditions for that one. 2015-119, uh, 4805 through 11 Bel Air Road uh, was by consent with um, plenty of apartment conditions and agreement between the parties regarding no exterior signage for a tattoo parlor, uh, for tattoos. 
um, 2015-120, 6516 Pebble Brook Road um, was by consent. 2015-125, 1517 through 23 South Caton Avenue was by consent. Planning department conditions. 2015-126, 1910 through 14 Light Street uh, was by consent. 2015-127, 3814 East Northern Parkway was by consent. 2015-130, uh, uh, 1207 South Highland Avenue uh, was by consent. 2015-131, uh, 2900 uh, Pressman Street, uh, I'm on no. And 2015 133 219 South High Street. I'm a yes. 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 The approval, I think we should really track what they asked for so there's not a lot of wiggle room in terms of moving things around. You know, in the apartment on the third floor. I don't know if we can, we can do that. Um, it's an efficiency. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, they, if they deviate from their plan, they would they potentially risk uh, having to come back. True. Yeah. 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 Yeah.